সুবির আমার স্ক্রিন কি দেখা যাচ্ছে হ্যাঁ দেখা যাচ্ছে দেখা যাচ্ছে রেকর্ডিং শুরু করো হ্যালো দীপিকা হ্যাঁ স্যার গুড মর্নিং হ্যালো গুড মর্নিং স্যার গুড মর্নিং মর্নিং এই তোমাদের আরম্ভ কখন হচ্ছে হয়ে গেছে এখন এখন শুরু করব আচ্ছা 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 শুরু করব স্যার আচ্ছা তাহলে কি এখন শুরু করব স্যার আচ্ছা 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 ঠিক আছে না আমি তাহলে এসছি আমি একটু তো তোমাদের সঙ্গে কথা বলে নিলে ভালো হতো আজকে তুমি করো করো আমি আছি কোন অসুবিধা মিউটেড ডক্টর অসিত পন্ডা আপনি আছেন হ্যাঁ গুড মর্নিং ম্যাম গুড মর্নিং গুড মর্নিং গুড মর্নিং 
তাহলে আমরা কি প্রোগ্রাম শুরু করতে পারি হ্যাঁ স্যার আছেন স্যার প্রথমে একটু মিনগরালে বলবেন স্যার আপনি মিউট হয়ে আছেন গুড মর্নিং স্যার শুনতে পাবো আপনার কথা শোনা যাচ্ছে না প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার ভেরি গুড মর্নিং মিস্টার সাগির আমাদের টু ডেজ অনারেবল স্পিকার আমরা একটু সময় নিচ্ছি আমাদের স্যার জয়েন করলে প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার জয়েন করেছিলেন লেফট আউট হয়ে গেছেন আমরা শুরু করে দেব হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে কোনো প্রবলেম নেই আমার ভয়েস ক্লিয়ার আছে তো একদমই ওকে আমি না এর মধ্যে আছি ঝামেলার মধ্যে আছি আমি তোমাদের প্রথমে একটু বলে দিতে চাই আমি বেরিয়ে যাবো জানো তো আমি আপনাকে বলতে বলছি হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ ঠিক ঠিক মর্নিং আমি অনুষ্ঠানে প্রথমে আজকে আমরা রবিবার আমরা এই অনুষ্ঠানটা আমরা ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইটের উপরে আমরা আজকে মিট করছি গুগল মিটে আমাদের সমস্ত আমাদের প্রিয় অধ্যাপক বৃন্দ এবং হচ্ছে যে আমাদের বাইরের কিছু অতিথি আছেন এবং সবার আগে আমি এক্সপ্রেস মাই ওয়েলকাম টু মিস্টার মোহাম্মদ সাগির হোসেন লিগাল অ্যাসোসিয়েট হ্যাঁ সাগির শেখ শেখ মোহাম্মদ সাগির হোসেন শেখ মোহাম্মদ সাগির শেখ মোহাম্মদ সাগির লিগাল অ্যাসোসিয়েট ল ফার্ম ফ্রম বেঙ্গালোর ইজ ভেরি মাচ ওয়েলকাম হিয়ার স্যার আমরা আজকে আমাদের মাস্টারমশাই যারা আছেন ক্যান ইউ আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ইন বেঙ্গলি ওকে ওকে ইউ অলসো আমরা আমরা বাংলাতেই বলছি আমাদের সকল টিচার যারা আছেন তাদেরকে আমার মর্নিং শুভেচ্ছা জানাই তো আজকে আমরা একটা কি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইস্যু নিয়ে আজকে ডিসকাশন করছি এবং তাতে আমার সমস্ত যারা অধ্যাপক আছেন এবং যারা বাইরে থেকে আছেন সকলকে আমার এই রোববারের একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট ডে সকলেরই একটা রেস্টিং ডে থাকে রোববারটা কিন্তু সেই সময়ের মধ্যে আমরা এটা সবাইকে আমরা টেনে নিয়েছি কিন্তু আমাদের প্রয়োজন আসছে বলে সবাই আপনার টাইম স্পেয়ার করছে সেই জন্য আবারও আপনাদেরকে ধন্যবাদ জানাই আর সত্যি কথা বলতে কি আজকে একটা ইস্যু যেটা আছে সেই ইস্যুটা 
অনেক পুরনো ইস্যু হয়ে গেছে কিন্তু প্র্যাকটিক্যালি যে যখন হচ্ছে যে আমাদের নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরিতে নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরি যখন আমাদের ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল রেভলিউশন হয়েছিল ইউরোপে তো সেই সময় থেকেই আমরা দেখেছিলাম যে ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল রেভলিউশনে ভেরিয়াস টাইপস অফ সাইন্টিফিক ইনভেনশনস রিসার্চ ইনোভেশনস অলসো স্কালপচার আর্ট লিটারেলি এক্সপোজার নানা রকম দিকে ডাইমেনশনে সারা পৃথিবীব্যাপী এটা ছড়িয়ে পড়েছে ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল রেভলিউশনের জন্য তো সেই সময় এই যে এই পেটেন্ট ন্যাচার নেচার অফ দ্য পেটেন্ট তার ইমপ্লিমেন্টেশন ইমার্জেন্সি ডেভেলপ করেছিল তো এই যে এটা বেসিক যে পেটেন্ট যে ল যেটা আছে মানে আইপি প্রোটেকশন যে ল ইন্টালেকচুয়াল প্রোটেকশন প্রপার্টি রাইট যে ল এটা মেনলি অরিজিনেট করেছে আর কি দ্য স্ট্যাচুট অফ মনোপলিস সিক্সটিন ব্রিটিশ স্ট্যাচুট অফ অ্যানি সেভেন্টিন আর অরিজিন অফ দ্য প্যাটেন্ট ল এখান থেকে এটা জেনারেট করেছে তৎকালীন সময়ে ইউরোপের বিভিন্ন দেশে বিভিন্ন রকম আবিষ্কার হয়েছে র্যাপিড ওয়েতে ডিসকভারি চলছে তো ন্যাচারালি এই ডিসকভারিগুলো যাতে সকলের কাছে পৌঁছানো যায় অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম যারা অরিজিনেটার তাদের কাছে যাতে এটা তার ভ্যালুয়েবল অ্যাসেট হিসেবে থাকে তা সেটা একটা মাথায় রেখে এই জিনিসটা ডেভেলপ করেছিল এখন হচ্ছে কি যে এই যে ইন্টালেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইট যেটা আছে তার মধ্যে এটাও ইট ইজ ওয়ান টাইপ অফ অ্যাসেট ইট ইজ অলসো অ্যাসেট অফ দ্য হিউম্যান ক্রিয়েশন আমাদের ব্রেনের যে ক্রিয়েশন সেই ক্রিয়েনের ক্রিয়েশনে ইট ইজ পার্ট অফ দ্য অ্যাসেট তো অ্যাসেটের দুটো ফর্ম থাকে ট্যাঞ্জিবল অ্যাসেট অ্যান্ড ইনট্যাঞ্জিবল অ্যাসেট তো আমরা যদি একটা বাড়ি ঘর বা কার জমি ল্যান্ড দেখি অল আর বিজ আর ট্যাঞ্জিবল অ্যাসেট ট্যাঞ্জিবল মানে উই ক্যান টাচ দেম উই ক্যান ফিল দেম বাট এই ইন্টালেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি হুইচ দ্য ক্রিয়েশন অফ দ্য হিউম্যান ব্রেন দ্যাট ইজ এ ইনট্যাঞ্জিবল অ্যাসেট কিন্তু ইনট্যাঞ্জিবল হলো আই ক্যান উই ক্যান অনলি ফিল দোজ অবজেক্টস উই উই অনলি ফিল দোজ ক্রিয়েশনস আমরা সেগুলোকে ফিল করতে পারি কিন্তু অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম প্রপার্টি যেরকম ক্যারেক্টার আছে যে আমরা সেটাকে বিক্রি করতে পারি পারচেস করতে পারি মডগেজ দিতে পারি তো সেই আইপি সিস্টেমে যে আমরা ইন্টারলেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইটে যেটা আমরা ডেভেলপ করি সেটাও কিন্তু আমরা প্রপার্টি হিসেবে মতো আমরা কিন্তু মডগেজ দিতে পারি আমরা সেল করতে পারি আমরা বাইও করতে পারি দিজ আর দি থিংস দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াই ইট ইজ কলড এ ইনট্যাঞ্জিবল অ্যাসেট তো এই অ্যাসেটের মধ্যে প্রধানত চারটে ডাইমেনশনে এটা আমরা এর কমন টাইপ অফ আইপি ইন্টালেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টির মধ্যে আমরা চারটে ডাইমেনশন পাই একটা হচ্ছে যে কপি রাইট এর পেরিফেরিয়ার মধ্যে একটা কপি রাইট থাকে একটা পেটেন্ট সিস্টেম থাকে একটা ডিজাইন থাকে একটা ট্রেডমার্কস থাকে তো ন্যাচারালি এইরকম বিভিন্ন ফর্মে কপি রাইটের মধ্যে সবাই আমরা কম বেশি জানি যে কপি রাইটের মধ্যে এই বুকস লিটারি ওয়ার্কস সংস তারপর হচ্ছে যে ফিল্মস ড্রামা আর্টিস্টিক এক্সপোজার কম্পিউটার প্রোগ্রামিং এগুলো সব আমাদের কপি রাইটের অ্যাক্টের মধ্যে আসছে মানে যে ক্রিয়েট করছে তার প্রপার্টি হিসেবে থাকছে এটা আর পেটেন্টের মধ্যে ন্যাচারালি কমার্শিয়াল ইনভেনশনস থাকছে যেমন হচ্ছে যে আপনার বিজনেস প্রোডাক্ট থাকছে প্রসেস থাকছে এবার ধরুন আমাদের কোকো কোলা কোকো কোলা যে বাজারে অল ওভার দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড তা যে মার্কেটিং করছে তাদের কিছু কিছু কম্পোজিশন যেটা আছে সেটা স্টেট সিক্রেট হিসেবে আছে সেগুলো কিন্তু যে কেউ ওটা জানতে পারবে না এমনকি আপনি আর টি আই করেও সেগুলো জানতে পারবেন না বিজনেস সিক্রেট এমনকি ওই এমপ্লয়িতে যারা জোম্যাটো বলুন বা কোকো কোলাতে যারা কাজ করছে তাদেরকে সাইন করেই নেওয়া হচ্ছে যে আপনি নেভার ইউ ডিসক্লোজ দোজ বেসিক কেমিক্যালস ফর ইনগ্রিডিয়েন্টস বাই হুইচ দ্য প্রোডাক্ট ইজ মেড তো দিজ আর দ্য থিংস দেয়ার আর ডিজাইনে তো আমরা থাকছি আর একটা অ্যাসপেক্ট হচ্ছে ডিজাইন তো ডিজাইনে আমরা নানা রকম ড্রয়িংস থাকছে কম্পিউটার মডেল থাকছে দিজ আর দ্য পার্ট অফ দ্য ডিজাইন এই আইপি ল তে গ্রুপের নিজস্ব যেটা ক্যাপাসিটি আছে সেটাকে প্রোটেক্ট করছে আর ট্রেডমার্কের মধ্যে আমরা ফটো পাই সাইন পাই সিম্বল পাই সাউন্ড পাই এমনকি ধরুন আমার অমিতাভ বচ্চনের যে ভয়েসটা দ্যাট ইজ এক্সক্লু দ্যাট ইজ এ ভেরি স্পেসিফিক অ্যান্ড ডিসক্রিট ভয়েস তো সেই ভয়েসটাকেও কিন্তু অ্যাকচুয়ালি কোনো কোনো জায়গাতে পেটেন্ট নেওয়া হয় সুতরাং আপনি চাইলে সেই ভয়েসটা কিন্তু উইদাউট পারমিশন আপনি ইয়ে করতে কপি করতে পারবেন না যে যাদের পেটেন্টের মধ্যে এইসব জিনিসগুলো পড়ছে এখন হচ্ছে কি আমাদের দেশে প্র্যাকটিক্যালি যে আমাদের যে জেনারেশন যেটা আমরা প্রধানত এই যে শিক্ষা ব্যবস্থার মধ্যে আমরা যে টিচার আমরা কিন্তু আগে এত বেশি আমরা ওয়াকি বল ছিলাম না কিন্তু এটাও ঘটনা যে শিক্ষা প্রতিষ্ঠানগুলো যেগুলো দ্যাট ইজ দ্য স্টোর হাউস অফ নলেজ নলেজ ওশন অফ নলেজ তো যে সমস্ত অধ্যাপকরা কাজ করছেন যারা বিজ্ঞানীরা কাজ করছেন যারা গবেষণা করছেন তাদের সামনে ক্রিয়েশনের একটা বিরাট অ্যাম্পল অপরচুনিটি তৈরি আছে ধরুন তারা কোন তারা যে সমস্ত প্রোগ্রামিং করছেন বা কোনো ডিজাইন করছেন বা কোনো একটা কন্টেন্ট তৈরি করছেন সেগুলো এক্সক্লুসিভ যদি পেটেন্ট নিতে পারেন তারা তারা কি হচ্ছে না তাদের এক্সক্লুসিভ প্রপার্টি
বা আরিয়া অল দি যাদের মানে অ্যাসেসমেন্ট বডি যারা আছে তারা কিন্তু ওই সমস্ত ইন্টারেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইটের এগেনস্টে আপনার অধ্যাপক বা যারা স্টাফ তারা কি কি পিঠে পেটে নিয়েছেন ধরুন আমি আপনাকে বলছি যে ইউ বিং এ সায়েন্স টিচার নট এসেন্সিয়ালি দ্যাট ইউ হ্যাভ টু টেক ইউর পেটেন্ট অর ইন্টারেকচুয়াল রাইটস টু অনলি সায়েন্স সাবজেক্টস অলসো ধরুন আপনি আমার ডিজাইন করলেন আমার একটা ছবি আঁকলেন দ্যাট ইজ ভেরি মাচ হ্যাভিং রেলিভেন্স ইন দ্য সোশ্যাল ইম্প্যাক্ট তো সুতরাং সেই ডিজাইনটা কোনো আপনি পেটেন্ট করতে পারেন আপনি আমার লিটারি একটা গল্প লিখেছেন যেটা ইউনিকনেস রয়েছে তো ইউনিকনেস নিয়ে গল্প করতে গেলে তো আপনাকে ভাবতে হবে তো ওই ক্রিয়েশনের মধ্যে এইসব জিনিসগুলোর মধ্যে যে যেটা আমরা আলটিমেটলি আপনার নিজস্বতা ডেভেলপ করছে সেটাকে কিন্তু গভর্নমেন্ট থেকে এটা এনকারেজ করছে অর্থাৎ তার যোগ্যতা আপনি পেটেন্ট দিতে পারেন তা এখন নতুন নতুন ডাইমেনশনে আমাদের এইগুলো এখন ভাবার সময় এসছে যাতে করে আমরা শিক্ষিত মানুষ যারা শিক্ষার সঙ্গে যুক্ত আছেন তাদেরকে ক্রিয়েশনকে এনকারেজ করার জন্য তাদের ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল আইডেন্টিটিকে মেনটেন করার জন্য আমরা এগুলোকে করতে চাই এগুলো করতে করার প্রতি উৎসাহিত করছে আমি একটা হচ্ছে একটা ছোট কথা বলে একটা ছোট শেষ করছি যে বাংলাদেশে বাংলাদেশে জাস্ট কিছুদিন আগে একটা ঘটনা ঘটেছিল যে একজন ইউরোপিয়ান আর কি সে ও চব্বিশ টোয়েন্টি ফোর আওয়ার্স একটা ক্যামেরা চালু করে দিয়েছিল একটা বোনের মধ্যে মানে ফরেস্টের মধ্যে ক্যামেরা চালু করে দিতে সেই বনে অনেক মানে মাংকি থাকতো অনেক মানে বানর থাকতো তো ন্যাচারালি সেরা ক্যামেরাটা এমন ভাবে ছিল যে বানর গুলো বুঝতে পারে বানর গুলো বোঝার ফলে তার মধ্যে একটা বানর কি করেছে না চব্বিশ ঘন্টা ক্যামেরা চলছে একটা বিশেষ মুহূর্তে সে কিছু কিছু ছবি পোস্ট দেয় এবং যে ফটোগ্রাফার সে দেখলো কি অসংখ্য ফটো হয়েছে ফটোর মধ্যে একটা ফটো একটা ইউনিক ফটো ডেভেলপ করেছে যাতে করে সে নিজেই সেলফি করে পোজ দিচ্ছে এবার সে সেটাকে মানে পেটেন্ট নেওয়ার চেষ্টা করে যে এই স্পেসিফিক ফটোটা আর কেউ যেন তৈরি করতে না পারে বা কেউ দেখাতে দেখতে দেখাতে না পারে সেই জন্য একটা পেটেন্ট নেওয়ার চেষ্টা করে কিন্তু করতে গিয়ে তার এগেনস্টে আমাদের যে পেটা আছে পেটা যেটা ফিল্ম ফটোগ্রাফ তো সো দিটার্ন অফ দ্য প্রফিট উইল গো টু দ্য মাংকি হু হ্যাজ মেড দ্য সেলফি তো কন্ট্রোভার্সি ওয়াজ দ্য ইট ওয়াজ গান টু দ্য বাংলাদেশ কোর্ট তো শেষকালে ওই ভদ্রলোক যিনি সেলফি মানে করতে সাহায্য করেছিলেন ওই বানরটাকে সে তখন একটা রফা করে যে ফিফটি 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 চলে যাবে হচ্ছে যে মালিকের কাছে আর ফিফটি হবে যে পেটার পেটার কাজ প্রধানত কাজ করছে কি অ্যানিমালদের প্রোটেকশনের জন্য এবং তাদের মেনটেন্যান্সের জন্য তাদের সুবিধা অসুবিধা দেখার জন্য তাদেরকে ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট অর্থাৎ এখন যেহেতু মানে পশু সে নিজে থেকে সেলফি তুলেছে মানেই যে তাকে পুরো দিয়ে দিতে হবে আবার যে মানুষ যেহেতু পুরো তুলেছে এই ফটোটা সুতরাং তাকে পুরো দিয়ে দিতে হবে এরকম ব্যাপার না সুতরাং এই যে বিভিন্ন ডাইমেনশনে এখন কিন্তু ইন্টারেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইটের অ্যাক্ট গুলো ঘোরাফেরা করছে আমি যেটা আপনাকে আমাদের যেটা মনে হয় যে আমাদের এই যে বিভিন্ন যে এনআরএফ বলুন বা আরিয়া বলুন আরিয়া বা ধরুন আমরা যে যে ন্যাকের কথাই বলছি সেখানে কিন্তু মাস্টারমশাইদেরকে এনকারেজ করছে যে আপনারা আপনাদের নিজস্ব সাবজেক্টের বাইরে গিয়েও আপনাকে ধরুন এমন কিছু তৈরি করুন এক্সক্লুসিভলি আপনাকে চিন্তা ভাবনা করে যেটা আপনার এক্সক্লুসিভলি আপনি ইউজ করতে পারবেন এবং যেটা বহু লোক ব্যবহার করতে পারবে কিন্তু সেখানে আপনার সত্য সেটা আপনার নিশ্চয়তা করবে তাই সুতরাং এইসব নানা রকম জিনিসগুলো মাথার মধ্যে আসছে তো আজকে এই বিশেষ দিনে আমরা অনলাইনে আমরা আছি তো অনলাইনে থাকার ফলে আমাদের টিচার যারা আছেন সবাইকে আমি ধন্যবাদ জানাই যে আপনারা আজকে রোববারের সময়টা আপনি আমাদের জন্য দিয়েছেন এবং এটা আমাদের প্রয়োজন এবং আমাদের সকলের তরফ থেকে মোহাম্মদ সাগির সাহেব যিনি আছেন লিগাল অ্যাসোসিয়েট ফ্রম বেঙ্গালোর তো তাকে আমরা ধন্যবাদ জানাই যে উনি আমাদের জন্য সময় দিয়েছেন আর হচ্ছে যে আমি টিচারদেরকে আবার অনুরোধ করবো যে আবার আপনাদের কিন্তু সম্ভবত আজকে একটা আর একটা প্রোগ্রাম আছে বিকেলবেলার দিকে তো আপনারা কাইন্ডলি সেই প্রোগ্রামটা অ্যাটেন্ড করবেন কেননা এটা খালি আমাদের যে ন্যাকের যে আইকিউসি যে টিম আছে তাদের কাজ নয় এটা সকলকেই আপনাদেরকে সাপোর্ট দিলে পরে উই ক্যান মুভ ফরওয়ার্ড বিট বাই বিট লিটল বিট আমরা এগোতে পারবো তো আজকে আমি মোহাম্মদ সাগির সাহেব এবং আমাদের কোয়ার্ডিনেটর ন্যাকের কোয়ার্ডিনেটর আমাদের হচ্ছে অসিত পণ্ডা মহাশয় শ্রীতমা দীপিকা দিদিমণি এবং সাহেলি দিদিমণি এবং যারা সমস্ত মাস্টারমশা আছেন সবাইকে আমার আন্তরিক শুভেচ্ছা জানাই সকালবেলায় আপনাদের আমার আন্তরিক শুভেচ্ছা এবং আমার অভ্যর্থনা জানালাম এবং 
কলেজ যদি নর্মাল স্থিতির দিকে এগিয়ে যায় তো নিশ্চয়ই আমরা এইগুলো দুই একটা অফলাইনে যদি করতে পারি আমাদের গুণী মানুষদেরকে নিয়ে এসে যদি আমাদের আপনাদের সঙ্গে ইন্টারাকশন করানো যায় আমাদের খুব ভালো লাগবে তো আজকে আপনারা যতটুকু সময় পারবেন আপনারা আমাদের সঙ্গে থাকবেন এইটুকু বলে আমি বিদায় নিচ্ছি ধন্যবাদ Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your illuminating inaugural address. Our song is, sir, so thank you very much for your intellectual property rights. I can tell you what you have said. Really, it is recognized that 21st century belongs to the era of knowledge, economy, and the role of the intellect. Any country's ability to translate knowledge into innovation and then commercialize it will determine its future. Therefore, issues of generation, evaluation, protection, and exploitation of intellectual property have become critically important all over the world. Policymakers around the world are laying great emphasis on creating a robust intellectual property rights and an ecosystem that encourages the innovation. So, uh, uh, I am happy to announce you that uh, our uh, Distinguished speaker, Sheikh Mohammed Sagid, with us, and I would like to invite Dr. Mukesh Kumar, organizing secretary of today's uh, webinar on fundamental uh, rights, uh, uh, fundamental issues of intellectual property rights issues. Uh, Mukesh, Dr. Mukesh Kumar, he will give your uh, welcome address. Okay, thank you. Uh, Good morning to all who have joined with us of today's webinar on fundamental of intellectual property rights, key issues organized by IQAC and research cell, Belda College. I would like to extend my very warm welcome to uh, Dr. Marwanda Bondol, chairperson of today's webinar and principal of Belda College for encouraging us to organize this webinar which is very much uh, relevant in the present uh, scenario. I extend my heartfelt welcome to Dr. Asit Ponda, uh, convener of this webinar and IQAC coordinator, Belda College, and uh, HOD of Department of English, Belda College. I extend my warm welcome to Dr. Uh, Lipika Mondol, coordinator of today's webinar and HOD of uh, Geography, Belda College. I uh, also convey uh, my warm welcome to Dr. Shritama Mishra, uh, member IQAC, to Dr. Shoyli Choudhury, member of IQAC, to Dr. Uh, Deepak Paswan, member of IQAC, to Dr. Uh, uh, to Professor Anandamoy Sina, member of IQAC. Uh, now I uh, extend my uh, heartfelt welcome to our distinguished resource person of today's webinar, Mr. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed Sagir. Legal Associate of Law Firm of Noren uh, Thapetta, Bangalore, Karnatok. Uh, finally, I uh, heartily welcome all the participants of today's webinar. We hope that all the participants will be enlightened and enrich and gain knowledge from this webinar. So once again, a warm welcome to all of you for joining uh, this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mukesh Pradhan, for your welcome address. Uh, then I would like to invite Dr. Sahili Choudhury, HOD Department of Sociology, member IQS, for today's program, Fundamental Intellectual Property Rights Issues, organized by IQSC and research. Now over to Dr. Sahili. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mondul. Uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce our resource person, Mr. Sheikh Mohammed Sagir, to our August audience. Sheikh Mohammed Sagir has earned his LLB degree with the Honours in Intellectual Property Rights from the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Kharagpur, and has a BTEC degree in Electronics and Communications Engineering. He is presently working as a legal associate in law firm in Narin Thapeta, Bangalore, and is a patent associate and legal counsel. Mr. Mohammed Sagir is also a registered advocate in Kolkata Bar Council with a work experience of 10 years. He has also worked as a telecom engineer in companies like Nokia, 
ZTE Reliance. We are honored to have you, sir, with us. Now, I invite you to deliver the lecture on fundamentals of intellectual property rights, key issues. Welcome, sir. Sir, you are muted. Hello? Yes. yes yeah. Sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So, um, I'll go to my presentation, uh, which will just basically introduce the uh, IP sectors. So I'll not go in that much uh, technicality of these things uh, because this is a basic thing. So I'll just introduce uh, uh, to different IP regimes and uh, uh, the basic things which we need in our daily life. So uh, I think I'll share my screen. OK, just wait. Okay. Can, yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yes. 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 Sir. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, I will introduce regarding the IP regime. So what the uh, said told in the beginning uh, that is correctly he said. So from that note I will start. So first I will start the basic thing that uh, types of property. So uh, there are two types of property uh, which, which we can see in our daily life. One is tangible property and another is intangible property. So tangible property can be classified into two categories. One is movable and another is immovable. So what is movable which can move like car or bike or any, anything which can move from one place to another and which we can touch. So that is movable and tangible. And another one is immovable property. What is immovable property? Immovable property means which we can't move from one place to another, which is fixed in a particular place, uh, like building, land, or uh, any any such thing which we can't move, but which will lie in that specific place, but the right will be uh, with us. So these are two types of tangible properties. So th this, these two things is very much uh, uh, familiar to us because we can see in all the places we can feel all these things and uh, in our daily life we go through all these uh, uh, all these movable and immovable uh, property things so that is very much uh, known to us uh, now uh, now the, our today's uh, point of discussion is what is intangible property so what is intellectual property so intellectual property is a intangible property so intangible property, why it is called intangible? Because it cannot be, uh, it cannot be feel. We can't feel the property. We can't hold or we can't see those property. And so that that's why we call the intel, uh, intangible property. So intangible property, uh, uh, what is intangible property? The intellectual property will come under intangible property. So in intellectual property, there are <coughs> Okay. Uh, now today we'll discuss about the different types of uh, different types of intellectual property rights. Okay. Now, what is intellectual property? So, intellectual property is a property created by a person, a person using or uh, using his or her own intellect for ultimate use in commerce, and which is not available in the public domain. So, that is a intel uh, that is an intellectual property. 
uh, what does it mean it means suppose uh, i am a creator i am creating something it can or i am a inventor or i am a scientist or i work in r and d department and i prepare something or sub, i have invented something and i uh, i want to uh, in, i want uh, incentive from that thing and i want recognition from that thing so i have to go through the process of intellectual uh, i mean acquiring the rights in intellectual property so <clears throat> uh, okay so this intellectual property is different than other property rights why because this is a negative right so what is negative right and what is positive right first we will understand that positive right means the tangible rights suppose i have a car so i can enjoy my car so that is a positive right i have a building or have a, i have a flat so i can enjoy the possession of the flat or the possession of the building so that that is a positive right and what is negative right so negative uh, so intellectual property is a negative right what is negative right negative right means i will bar someone to enjoy those rights sir sorry to interrupt you we cannot yeah. see your next slide it's stuck in the first slide oh sorry uh, just a minute yes sir now we can see like it is the first slide what is the intellectual property we can see slide number 3 Oh, okay, I don't know why it's not moving. Just a bit. Uh, can you see slide number three? Yes, sir. We can see slide number three. That is what is intellectual property? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that one only. Yes, actually, we couldn't we couldn't see the slide. We only saw the introduction. Oh, okay, okay. Now it's visible, right? Yes, sir. It is now. Okay, I think if I do it slide show, then uh, it uh, it might uh, it might not coming. Okay, I'll try once again. Yeah, now uh, now it's uh, third slide, right? Um, actually, it's still in slide number three. Yeah, now. And now also it's in in slide number three, sir. And it's uh, like the way you have started. It is in that format. Okay, I don't know. Uh, sir, we can see. Uh, yes, sir, we can see through this. I think it will be better if you manually uh, do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just do it. Yeah. Now I think it's good now. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Okay, so what I'm saying, and uh, I'm in this slide, uh, slide number three. Uh, what it says about the uh, what is intellectual property and what is a uh, negative right. Uh, so, as I said, that positive positive right. Uh, there are two types of right we can uh, ensure in the property uh, in the property act. So one is positive right, and one is negative right. So positive rights is like intangible uh, property. What right we have? That is positive right. Positive right means. Uh, <clears throat> i have a flat i have a car or i have a building so i have the sole possession of those flat building or car and i i only can enjoy the right of the property or the right of that building or that car but uh, in intellectual property that is a negative right a negative right means i am barring someone from enjoying those rights that means i am suppose i have a i i i am uh, i uh, i am a writer and i have written some book and i am so i have a uh, i have a copyright holder of that book and i am barring there other persons to uh, do any any sort of uh, changes or any sort of uh, exploitation of my work so i am barring uh, that person so that is a negative right Okay, now what's the purpose of IP? So the purpose of IP is to provide an incentive to the individuals for new creation and encourage innovation. So uh, in all the see, this is the basic thing. If someone is doing something, he needs to be, um, I mean, he's he's uh, he needs to be encouraged so that he can uh, do more more such work, more such innovation or or. Um, 
more such creative work so suppose uh, in our so it's everything depends on the commercial perspective so if i am not earning something then uh, maybe i am not i will not get that motivation for, to do such work uh, suppose i am a scientist i am working uh, hard for uh, for some invention and uh, the invention i i i i cleared that invention i have uh, i mean i have successfully done uh, successful done that invention and then and then what then what i'll do with my invention for academic perspective it's good but from the commercial perspective uh, how i will protect it i mean anyone can use my thing and they can enjoy that thing uh, suppose i have invented something someone has taken my uh, invention and he has done uh, and uh, i mean he, he made something with that invention and he is uh, doing business he is uh, selling the product in the market and he is earning money so what is the uh, i mean uh, so what is the incentive of that person who uh, who has created that invention who has give its his his or her brain in that invention so what is the uh, benefit of that person so this is a one point uh, in the point of Uh, so uh, this is the benefit of ip so we can uh, give give some incentive or encourage that person to do what he is doing and what he is good at um the second part also the same like to accord the due recognition to the creators and the inventors uh, to ensure material reward for intellectual property material reward means uh, like money fame uh, what what you can call Uh, and the other thing is to make available genuine and original products to the uh, to the i mean um, to the local people or to the general public so that they can uh, they can get the original product or genuine product so it's not about the invention it's about the other ip part also that we later on uh, will discuss but now the slides are uh, visible right Yes, sir. They are clearly visible. Okay, fine. So basically, in IPO, uh, uh, will uh, in in IPO there are different fields. Uh, so one is the industrial design, other one is trademark, other one is patent, then copyright, then GI, uh, geographical indication. so i'll go one by one but mainly i will focus on patent and copyright uh, these two things or other things i will just uh, uh, give some little overview okay so uh, in one line we can say that patent there is for to protect technologies trademark is for to protect words signs logos labels design to protect outer ornamentation configuration means the design of that uh, of any particular product uh, gi to protect region specific product and copyright it's to protect artistic uh, and literary work so for example i will uh, so this examples i have taken okay so i have copied from somewhere and i am using it for uh, academic purpose so i am not violating copyright uh, anyway okay uh, so mm, this is uh, the example is good for good to understand the different types of protections available in ip so first one is the fan so the design of the fan so this is protected by the design act and uh, the motor of that fan how it works that is protected by a patent so that is a technological part and the design of the fan they, it has four blades and it has lights and all these things so this this is a design this is there is no technicality in that so this is a indus uh, so this is protected by a design act so this is one type of this uh, intellectual property and uh, uh, the motor that uh, rotates inside the fan uh, that is uh, a technical part so that it can be protected by patent like in mobile also in mobile uh, in back uh, inside the mobile there are um, uh, chips and multiple things are there and uh, even the gu uh, 
GUI, the user interface also can be protected by uh, Patent Act. <coughs> Now, so this is Apple phone and in back side there is an Apple logo for that. So this Apple logo is protected by trademark. So you can see there are three types of uh, things is there. Uh, industrial design, patent and trademark. This three IP thing we can see from this uh, two example. Uh, other thing is Coca-Cola. If you see, I will go. I will come uh, next to the Coca-Cola example. So that is a good example. I will go next then. Okay, now there is a Laddu, Tirupati, uh, Tirupati Laddu is there. That is also has a GI in that. Uh, that is specific to that region. And we all know regarding the case between uh, Orissa and West Bengal regarding the Rasgulla. So we got GI for that case also uh, uh, for uh, West Bengal. And this is a Kolapuri Chappal. This is uh, this is also has a GI of a specific like we have a Basmati uh, Deradun Deradun rice. So that is also has a GI of that. Okay, now we'll uh, come to example of uh, Coca-Cola example. So the Coca-Cola. See, there are two three things are there in this. So one is the bottle. One is the inside the bottle and the liquid, uh, the drink. Uh, the name of the name engraved in the bottle. So uh, the first, first the logo of Coca-Cola uh, is an example of trademark. So the name itself. So whenever we'll see this uh, design and this name, suddenly we'll recognize it that this is a Coca-Cola bottle. If we can't uh, suppose we can't see the whole thing, only C we can. Uh, the letter C we can see from uh, uh, like from the back side or something we can recognize it this is a Coca-Cola uh, bottle of that so this is a trademark of that so this Coca-Cola labeling is uh, uh, protected under trademark now the next thing is the shape of the bottle so uh, we know that there's a specific shape of this bottle so this is protected by design so all all the like Coca Cola or if you see the other other cold drinks, so they have some specific design of that bottle. So they protect those bottle design of bottles with uh, design act. And the patent in this case, the patent can be the chemical compositions of the liquid inside the bottle. I mean, what is there in the bottle? They have some chemical specific chemical composition or a specific chemical. Um, Thing which is uh, which they prepare, uh, I mean, they, which they use to prepare that liquid, so that can be protected by patent. Uh, the compositions and uh, regarding the copyright, that in respect of text, database, or artistic work appearing on the websites is copyright protected. Even this um, name also, it is. This design is copyright protected. See, we can write Coca Cola in different manner also, right? So this is, but the specific design, this is copyright protected, and the name is trademark protected. So uh, if I go for the next slides, you will um, get to know very clearly all these things. Uh, now I will. Uh, okay, so okay, so uh, I just give one. I want to give just one example. Uh, to understand the uh, importance of uh, intellectual property because nowadays uh, the intellectual property uh, rights are more i mean um, more powerful rights than any other rights like any other property rights like for example we are using whatsapp so whatsapp uh, it's a very simple code even in the college also we can prepare such a uh, even those who are from computer science or IT, they can. Uh, um, it's very easy to prepare that code uh, because this uh, chat room anyone can create. Those who know uh, well about, well know about the coding and all. But the thing is, why Facebook has acquired uh, WhatsApp, and uh, and that is the and that is the biggest. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, biggest transaction happened. Of acquisition in the history. So, Facebook has uh, purchased WhatsApp. So, they have not purchased the code. The code is very simple code. Anyone can make it. Even the Facebook has their own uh, uh, 
own coder and all they can they can make it e very easily this type of simple coding and they can they can make any uh, this same this chat box and even facebook has his own chat system so why they have purchase and they have purchase in one point i mean uh, in 20 billion dollar 20000 billion sorry 20000 billion dollar what is around 1.49 lakh crore indian rupees they have purchase uh, whatsapp in that amount which is the highest uh, i mean which is the highest uh, transaction happened in any acquisition why they have purchased it so they they have not purchased the code of that uh program they have purchased the trademark of whatsapp because the whatsapp is a very well known well known name and lot and lakhs of people are using whatsapp in all over the world so they've just purchased the name of that the trademark of that thing so even if uh, if tomorrow if someone wants to make one uh, chat box or something that will not be uh that much popular that may not be that much popular and it will take time to uh, um, uh, to uh, to go to people and uh, to enjoy uh, and uh, and accepted by the people but already whatsapp has their own base lots many people are using whatsapp so facebook what facebook has done facebook has just acquired the whatsapp trademark and they are using whatsapp and, pe and many people don't, uh, doesn't know that whatsapp uh, belongs to facebook because they are using they are using uh, whatsapp and they are, it's very normal for them they don't want to go to the uh, internal thing what is uh, happening inside uh, whatsapp what is happening inside the company all these things but so this is so this is the power of a uh, uh, intellectual property and uh, many times you will heard that the cases between samsung and uh, apple all these things because and that lakhs lakhs of uh, i mean not lakhs thousands thousands of dollars are involved in this someone is infringing uh, apple is infringing uh, uh, samsung is infringing some apple patents and an uh, apple is going to court and apple is uh, doing something like that it's happening so lots of money are involved in this intellectual property so it cannot be uh, these things cannot be ignored uh, i mean uh, so people should know about the about their intellectual property rights okay so now i'll go to the next slide that is the timeline so every intellectual property has a specific timeline so one is um, so why the timeline is there I'll, that i will tell you so see this rights are given by the government so this uh, right its patent trademark or design copyright anything it is given by the government so government is for the people so what the, so if they are giving rights or to a particular person or to a particular inventor then what the common people are getting from that now that's why they have uh, limited it into timelines this so this timelines it's not for only for india it's for all over the world so this uh, this iprs everything is guided by the international uh, international laws and i mean not international laws international treaties are there so all the countries follow this uh, uh, these guidelines okay and uh, one more thing in patent trademark design copyright anything you have you um, like, uh, in uh, sorry except gi patent trademark design copyright it's a jurisdictional right i mean uh, if you are in india then you have to take patent for india if you are doing business in us or europe then you have to go there and you have to take patent from uh, take patent there so it's a it's not a uh, exclusive ex exclusive li right of of the world so where uh, so if you are uh, if you are indian inventor you thought uh, you want to do uh, um, you want to patent your invention you have to do it in india now suppose uh, someone in us is infringing you can't do anything so it's better you wherever you want to do business suppose in your product you want to sell in india you take patent in india you want to sell your product in us you take patent in us or if you want to sell in europe you take patent in europe and then do business so like that 
for there is a specific you have to go to a specific country and uh, you have to take patent okay so now uh, again i will come to the timelines why this timelines is given so this timelines is given for the sake of the common people so you have if you have a patent you can't hold it for a long time you are inventor yeah you, you uh, the right is given to you you are uh, you are a writer you are writing something the right is given to you but people has the right to uh, enjoy these things of enjoy this thing so they have to ensure the government has to ensure both the part uh, like the part of the inventor and as well as the part of the uh, common people so inventors so they are uh, they they are giving incentive the government is giving incentive to them also so they have uh, they have uh, given some timelines like for patent it's 20 years so you can enjoy your rights only for 20 years after 20 years it will go to the public domain it will uh, it will be in public domain i mean you can use it you can do anything uh, anything what you want with that patent but in that case the inventor can't say anything or uh, the uh, i mean that i will come later uh, okay so this is so that's why in patent it's 20 years and you have to renew it every year so why you have to renew it so that you uh, so that you can uh, you can show that what what patent you have you are utilizing it it's not that uh, you are holding you are holding it uh, you, have, you have the right and you are holding it back and you are not giving anyone uh, to uh, uh, i mean you are not giving anyone to enjoy that right and um uh, you are just uh, blocking that right from other so that's why every year you have to renew it that means you are interested in that patent and that's why uh, you are you have the right to enjoy that patent okay in trademark it's a, a trademark is a lifelong but after 10 years you have to renew it because trademark it doesn't uh, direct is uh, the trademark is benefit for the people only because if you have some trademark and people will know that this is a authentic product and they will, they can enjoy that product so if uh, if this is uh, that's why it's lifelong but after every 10 years you have to renew it so that um, government can see that uh, you have the interest in the in doing business of that product uh, design is also the same like patent it's but it's for 15 years after 10 uh, you don't have to renew it every year after 10 years you have we can renew it for the next 5 years so it's for 15 years time copyright is 60 years so 60 years uh, uh, it's 60 years like some i mean uh, so here 60 years is suppose i am a uh, uh, i am a writer i have i have written something and uh, the 60 years will count after my death after my death from that 60 uh, like i, I have uh, i have written something in 20, uh, in the age of 20 in the age of 30 then from 32 uh, suppose i uh, i lived up to age of uh, 70 to so this 30 to 70 this 40 year i will enjoy and again after my death after uh, again the 60 years means this 100 years i can enjoy the copyright uh the copyright thing and if it is a any publication or something then from the date of publication it's 60 years okay and the other thing and the last thing is gi so gi is a lifelong but after 10 years uh, you have to renew the gi okay uh now i will go individually uh to patent uh, sorry can we have uh, two minutes break i'll just go to washroom and come back yes yeah. uh, sir yeah 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 okay
আমাদের স্পিকার টু মিনিটস এর জন্য ব্রেক নিয়েছেন আমরা ততক্ষণ কানেক্টেড রয়েছি আমরা ওয়েট করছি উনি উনি আসবেন এবং আবার প্রেজেন্টেশন শুরু করবেন হ্যালো এভরিওয়ান ওকে সো নাও আই উইল ফার্স্ট আই ওকে আই উইল গো টু আওয়ার ফার্স্ট আইপি রাইট দ্যাট ইস পেটেন্ট সো বেসিক্যালি আই উইল কভার মেনলি আই পেটেন্ট অ্যান্ড কপি রাইট অ্যান্ড উইল জাস্ট ওভার গিভ ওভার ভিউ অফ ট্রেডমার্ক অ্যান্ড জি আই ওকে now the uh, okay so patent is granted for inventions uh the invention which is product process uh, materials and compositions okay so uh, what is product what is process and materials and compositions uh, I'll, briefly i'll tell you so product means suppose um, uh, it can be any mechanical thing suppose i am making something uh, i am in, i am an inventor i am inventing something um, suppose you get thing uh, a transmitter so i prepare i am making one transmitter i am making one receiver so that is the product so that the that product i can uh, i can take patent on that specific product uh, now what's the pro- what's the process so uh, the process is the transmitter there is a transmitter and it it is working in a specific manner so that is a process of that transmission or we can say the method of that transmitter so uh, it's not a general purpose transmitter suppose i, I am having one transmitter which which is not uh, which is not a general transmitter which is available already available in the market so this is something different than which i have um, uh, maybe now we are using uh, the lt technologies and all now uh, again we have some invent something new um, and in the in, in that in the new technologies we are creating something which which transmits some different thing so in that the trans- uh, so we can take a patent for that product and we can pay- take patent for the method of transmission so how it is transmitting to the uh, how it is transmitting so that process also we can uh, we can take so method also we can take and now uh, comes the material suppose i am uh, i am i have created a new material with some uh, new compositions or something then that uh, that also we can uh, take patent on that uh, and composition means any chemical compositions we can take uh, you can take patent on that but which is not uh, which is not a natural composition and which has some efficacy in that suppose i have i have uh, uh, i have two chemicals and i am um, uh, in my lab i have uh, adding two chemicals and i have creating something but the the um, i mean uh, uh, the nature of that chemical is completely different than the individual chemicals we have which i have added so if there is some efficacy and there is some advancement uh, in that then i can take patent on that chemical composition okay 
the second part is the patent have territorial jurisdictions what i have said earlier it's a territorial jurisdiction so you have to register the patent in all countries where we have our interest so if you have patent in india you can't expect to do business in some other country i mean you uh, you'll not enjoy, you can't enjoy the right of that patent in some other country um like for the same example i have a transmitter and i have sold that transmitter to on a particular particular company in india now that particular company is using that thing and some other company in us they heard about this transmitter they have created a new transmitter uh, with the same configuration and some uh, same configuration they are doing the same uh, process what what i have made in india and they are doing business there in us so i can i can't do anything for that because i i am not protected there i am protected in india uh, so this is a territorial jurisdiction so i have to foresee these things before um, so that i can um, before that i can take the protection of uh, my invention in some other countries so uh, i uh, suppose i'm doing I, i have created something and i i, I thought i'm thinking that uh, i will i will sell it in other in europe or i'll sell it in japan so i have to take I have to go and in i have to file patent in japan i have to grant for their patent from there and then only i can i can use it okay Uh, okay the third thing is patent application can be filed in india uh, by inventor and or his assignee okay so uh, the patent uh, can be filed by the inventor or his assignee what does it mean it mean it mean where well, suppose uh, you are in a educational institution or suppose you are in a college and the uh, the scientists they are uh, Uh, in lab they have made something so in that case the scientist or the professor or whoever whoever is uh, made that thing he is the inventor of that product he made that product but college has the uh, college can be uh, the assignee or applicant maybe he is uh, he is assigning that uh, he is uh, uh, so sorry so college is different college college is like a employer they are the employer and the uh, teachers and the professors they are the employee so there is a relation between employer employee relation so in that case um, maybe at the time uh, uh, maybe they are they have some agreement with the uh, with them maybe the professor has some agreement with the Uh, college authorities that whatever they will whatever the invention they will make it the right will go to the college because he is using the facilities he is using the resources of the college so college will say that okay uh, you are you are making that product that's right you will be the inventor and i will be the applicant applicant means who will file the patent so the applicant will be the college college will say okay you you made the product but the applicant uh, will be me i will have all the rights with me not with you you um, i mean in patent it will be shown that the inventor is this this person is the inventor and i uh, i am the uh, i am the right holder i mean the college will be the right holder of that invention so if tomorrow uh, if tomorrow college wants to sell that product he can sell it i mean they, uh, the college college authority can sell it so but they they have to give some the inventor has to give assignment to the college so inventor will say okay uh, as i am using your lab as i am using your uh, facilities i am using your resources everything so uh, i will give my right to you so to uh, so they will say okay um, uh, okay college will say okay that's fine you use everything you uh, as you are using your brain so you will be mentioned as inventor in the patent but the right will be lie with us so the all the com uh, all the commercial activities all the things uh, the right will be enjoyed by the college 
it's like it's not in uh, college or thing something it's uh, in everywhere it's like that only suppose someone is working in intel so intel is a uh, intel company is a right holder of the patent and the inventor they will just invent it and they will give it to intel and intel will do all the process all the filings everything everything they will do or they will spend every all the money everything they will do and the right after the grant of a patent they will use it the intel intel company will use it not the inventor inventor if inventor can use this thing in his sole discretion he can use it outside he can use uh, he can sell it because the right is not with him the right is not with the inventor the right is with the applicant applicant who is the applicant applicant is the employer of the company so here in this case the intel company is the applicant and the uh, the scientist or the those who are working on r and d so they are the inventor so they will assign they already have assigned their rights to the um, uh, to the applicant okay uh, now the criteria of patentability so uh, what can be patented so the what are the criteria of uh, patentability is there so first one is novelty second one is inventive step third one is capable of industrial application and fourth one is uh, some uh, some patent is barred i mean something is barred from uh, patent uh, patentability so that will come okay first i'll go to the first point what is novelty so novelty is uh, what is novel in my invention i i am working in a lab i have created something uh, i thought that see what i have made that it's path breaking and uh, no one can make it uh, this is the first time i am making it and i am very i am very happy after uh, making that product or making that process or composition anything but the thing is whether it is novel whether what i am thinking is correct that what i have made that no one has made it um, since uh, i mean till now so that is a question so if it is not novel then we can it can't be protect uh, it can't be patented um suppose i have created something and someone else has created that thing in other place Yeah. but uh, um okay for example i can give you one example uh like the same example i have made one transmitter here in india one more person has made a transmitter in us now in us uh or he has not made suppose he has not made he has made, he had prepared one paper he made one paper uh, paper publication uh, in us regarding the process of making that transmitter now in india i have made the made that transmitter now i want to file the patent uh, i filed it then the examiner uh, in the patent office they will see they will check they will check okay this thing is already published in us now you are filing in india that means this inventor uh, may has taken uh, idea from that uh, publication so this is not novel so this is not new novelty means new so this is uh, this is not new whatever he has whatever the inventor has made is not new it's already it's already in public domain people know that this th this uh, i mean uh, this technology people know this technology people know how it works and uh, maybe he has gone through Uh, google search or anything and he has taken some uh, has take uh, he got some paper and from there he has taken help and uh, he created his own invention so it will bar from patentability as it's not novel so uh, i think this uh, it's it's simple so if it is not in the same simple word if it, if it is not new you can't patent it now the second part is inventive step 
or it must be non obvious so what is inventive step so novelty lies okay so what is inventive step inventive step means uh in your invention there is something uh inventive in that so i'll give simple example uh for novelty and inventive step suppose there is a product a and product b and product c there are three products a b and c so product a is well known to the public product b is also well known to the public product c is also well known to the public now i have created one more product that is product d that that i made a product d and i think that the, uh, i have made a great thing i made a product d that is um, is very new now what is novelty the novelty is product d should not be same as product a it should not be same as product b or it should not be same as product c individually so a has these features and uh, my product d has these same features so this is not novel b has these fe these features and uh, my product ha has also has these uh, these features it's not patentable c has these specific features and i also have these specific features so it's not patentable so this is barred under novelty so the, my thing is not novel with respect to a b and c okay now i'll come to inventive step now in inventive step what is inventive step see here i have a product a i have a product b and i have a product c and now i have creating new product product d now product d is taking some features from product a some features from product b and some features from product c and i have created a new product that is product d now so i have combined the features of these three products a plus b plus c and i i got my product product d so this is barred by non obviousness so what is non obvious non obvious is the person skill in the art it's not obvious for the person skill in the art to make it so in this case a person suppose um, i am a biologist and uh, product a product b and product c i i know how it works how product a works how product b works and how product c works and it's for for me it's very obvious to combine these three products and make a new product that is product d so it will bar by obviousness so we'll say it's not inventive i have taken uh, i mean that person has taken the features from different different uh, from different different products and uh, after that uh, they make a fourth product so this will bar by non obviousness third is capable of industrial application so Third, so this whole patent thing is what's the purpose of this patent the purpose of this patent is to, for commercialization and for to give incentive to the inventor so i have i made one product which is not uh, maybe which is for academic purpose it's good but which, which i can i can't use in industry so in in that case i can't take patent on that i have to show in my patent i have to show see what i have created that is what i have created that is for the benefit of the industry for the benefit of the people and the product um, i mean what i made i will prepare that product and that product will uh, i mean what i made that is uh, that will be that will help to make one product and that product will go to the market and it will do business so that industrial application so every time we have to show that there is some industrial application in my patent i mean in my invention then we'll uh, then we'll get the patent so these are the three criteria basic criteria to show um, that the my my product or my process or my composition is patentable now uh, the fourth point is Uh, this is a statutory bar we have a patent act 
um, Patent Act 1970 in that section 3 and section 4 is there where specifically uh, something is barred from being patent from being patented okay so we'll see what are the bars which we can't uh, do patent on that okay uh, hello uh, lipika ma'am yeah yes yes yeah uh, if if you get any questions or anything i i, I, can, I can take it uh, if you want now oh, okay okay yeah yes there is a question there is yeah. a question mm. it is in the chat box it's, it's from anamika das Okay. Uh, she is asking, in case of literary criticism, suppose a very interesting finding has been discovered by a renowned scholar, mm. and that is stolen by a plagiarist. How no, can no, the no, no, I, I, I have not come uh, come into that. That is in copyright. I will, I okay. will come into that. Yeah. Okay. So we can take this question at the end of your lecture then. Yeah, this question I can take end of lecture. Okay. If, if there is anything uh, regarding patent, I can I can answer it now. Not yet. We did not find any question yet, sir. I bilingual okay. honourable participant Jarachin, কারণ অনেকটা কভার হয়ে গেল তখন হয়তো ভুলে যেতে পারে যে কি क्वेश्चन থাকা মানে মানে এসেছিল এই পর্যন্ত আমাদের যে ডিসকাশন হলো সেখানে যদি কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে সো ইউ ক্যান পুট ইওর क्वेश्चन ডক্টর অশিত পন্ডা Okay, so we'll go. Uh, sir, I have a question. Sir, okay. sir, I have a question, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, you told that the intangible objects, intangible materials are intellectual, belongs to um, uh, intellectual properties. So yes. a book, a book or a writing, they are, uh, they can, uh, we can see them. So uh, can they, did, uh, can a book or a writing no, no, be no. a... No, the book, the book itself, it's tangible. That's correct. But mm. what is the value of the book? The value of the book is the writing of the book. Inside that, what is written, right? There is a co if there is a cover, then there is no value of that book. The value is what is written inside it, and that what is written inside that you can't move. You are moving the book. You are not. You, you are not moving the text of that book. You are not moving. You are not erasing the text, and you are taking with you, and you are going somewhere with that, right? So it it is it is not it is not tangible. Tangible means you can't you you enjoy you can enjoy your property, and you can move with that property with the enjoyment. But book is different. Book, I mean, uh, physically, if you see the book. Uh, there is there is nothing in that you can you can enjoy that book you can keep keep your book and uh, i mean you can book the you can keep the uh, you can take the book from one place to another then you can cover cover your head at the time of sun and all those things you can do that you can enjoy but you can't enjoy the text inside the book achha, achha, achha. okay sir okay, i okay. hope uh, yeah yeah i hope you can i can clear huh? uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir. dr okay. HOD, Department of Chemistry, Velda College. Uh, so, we have a lot of people who have joined our college. We have a lot of students who have joined our college. We have a lot of students who have joined our college. Sir, I have a question. Is there any provision to bring up the patent from any other uh, publishers of uh, any published paper? No, first step to basically uh, what uh, what uh, happened? Uh, basically, what happened that uh, I have a paper published in a journal, mm -hmm. then some other person from other the journal mailed me about to get the patent of this publication. Then, what 
the procedure sorry ekbar bolun ami clear na question ta clear na amar kache are ekbar bolun na amar ekta paper published hoyeche ekta journal e sekhane published hoyeche ota du bochor holo ei recent pray 15-16 আচ্ছা না এবার কোয়েশ্চেন আছে এবার ব্যাপার আছে ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে যে আপনি ধরুন ওটা পাবলিশ হয়েছে দু বছর আগে এবার এখন যদি পেটেন্ট কেউ ফাইল করতে যাই অলরেডি আপনার ডকুমেন্টস তো পাবলিক ডোমেনে আছে রাইট জার্নালটা তো পাবলিক ডোমেনে আছে মানে ওটা সবার কাছে অ্যাক্সেস আছে আমি যে সেম যে কথাটা বললাম এই যে আগে যে স্লাইডটা আমি যেটা বললাম যেটা হচ্ছে নোভেল নোভেলটিতে যেটা হিট করবে ঠিক আছে কি হবে যখনই যখনই আসবে মানে তুমি যখন আমরা ফাইল করি প্রসেসটা বলবো কিভাবে ফাইলিং করা হয় তো ফাইল যখনই করব তখন সেটা যাবে হচ্ছে পেটেন্ট অফিসে পেটেন্ট অফিস যখন যাবে পেটেন্টে সার্চিং হয় সার্চিং মানে হচ্ছে ওরা দেখবে যে এই জিনিসটা অন্য কোথাও পাবলিশ হয়েছে কিনা বা অন্য কোন জায়গায় ডিসক্লোজ হয়েছে কিনা তো যদি দেখে যে হ্যাঁ আপনার এটা তো অলরেডি অলরেডি ডিসক্লোজ হয়ে গেছে দু বছর আগে এবার দু বছর আগে ডিসক্লোজ হয়েছে মানে সেটা অন্য কেউ ইউজ করতে পারে সেটা যে ওই কোম্পানি ইউজ করে বা এবং আপনি তো সেটা রাইটটাও দেননি ওদেরকে রাইট যে আপনি তো এটাও বলেননি যে না আমি যেটা করা করেছি এটা পুরো সোল রাইট হচ্ছে আপনার আপনি যা ইচ্ছা করতে পারেন এটা নিয়ে তো আপনি দেননি আপনি একটা পেপার পাবলিশ করেছেন সেটা কোনো ব্যাপার না সেটা আপনি করতেই পারেন আপনি যে কোনো জায়গায় পেপার পাবলিশ করতে পারেন তার মানে এই না যে আপনার যে রাইটটা সেটা চলে গেল ও মানে ওদের কাছে এটা হচ্ছে প্রথম কথা দ্বিতীয় কথা হচ্ছে এবার আপনিও যদি পেটেন্টটা আপনি নিজেও যদি পেটেন্ট করতে চান আপনি নিজেও যদি পেটেন্টটা আজকে ফাইল করেন তো আপনার মনে হলো যে না আমি যেটা বানিয়েছি এবার আমি একটা পেটেন্ট ফাইল করব। जो মানে আপনি এমন একটা জিনিস বললেন আমি ফর এক্সাম্পল আমি জাস্ট একটা বলছি আমি জানি আপনি কি আপনার ইনভেনশন না আমি জাস্ট একটা এক্সাম্পল আমি বলছি যে আপনি বললেন আচ্ছা এই ধরুন আচ্ছা মৌসুমি বায়ু পশ্চিম দিক থেকে আসে আমার মনে হচ্ছে আমি একটা নতুন এ আমি অ্যাকচুয়ালি রিয়েলি বলছি এটা যে এমন এ হচ্ছে যে একটা ডেটিং রেকর্ড যে এই জায়গা সি লেভেলের এক্সিস্টেন্স অনুযায়ী যে একটা প্রুফ দিয়েছিলাম এবং সেখানে ম্যানগ্রোভ মানে কি বলবো আপনি ইনভেন্ট করেননি রাইট এটা আপনি একটা ডেটা দিচ্ছেন এটা ইনভেনশন না এটা আপনার আপনি একটা ডেটা দিচ্ছেন যেটা অলরেডি অলরেডি এক্সিস্টিং অলরেডি নেচারে আছে মানে এই যে ধরুন ভূমিকম্প আটকানো যাবে বা ম্যানগ্রোভ ফরেস্ট কে রক্ষা করা যাবে এমন একটা হয়তো কোনো জিনিস তৈরি করলো যেটা আপনার ডেটাটাকে ইউজ করে আপনার যে ডেটা গুলো সেগুলো ইউজ করে তারা একটা জিনিস তৈরি করলো সেটা তারা করতে পারে जिस बनलो भूमिकम्प अटकानो जाए कम्पिटर सिसटेम बनलो डेटा टाइम 
পুরো আগে থেকে প্রেডিক্ট করে দেবে যে কখন কি আসবে বা কখন যে টেরিটোরিয়াল চেঞ্জেস হবে বা কিছু হবে সেটা বার করলো সেক্ষেত্রে যে প্রোডাক্টটা তৈরি করলো তারা বা কম্পিউটারটা বা সিস্টেমটা যেটা সিস্টেমটা তৈরি করলো সেই সিস্টেমটা তারা পেটেন্ট নিতে পারে রবীন্দ্রনাথের কোন একটি কবিতার উপরে কেউ একজন গবেষণা করেছেন এবং তিনি প্রফেসর এবং রিনাউন্ড স্কলার তো তিনি ধরুন রবীন্দ্রনাথের ওই কবিতাটির এমন একটি ব্যাখ্যা দিয়েছেন যে ব্যাখ্যাটি আগে এর মানে এর আগে আর কেউ দেননি উনি প্রথম এবং সেটা যথেষ্ট গ্রাহ্য হচ্ছে এবার ধরুন দু তিন বছর পর ওনার ঋণ স্বীকৃতি না করে কোন একজন মানে প্লেগিয়ারিস্ট সে ওই ব্যাখ্যাটা পুরো নিজের নামে চালিয়ে দিল সেক্ষেত্রে এই যে মানে যার যিনি ওইটা ফাইন্ডিংস করলেন যার ইনসাইট দিয়ে তিনি ওই ব্যাখ্যাটা করলেন তিনি এই প্লেগিয়ারিস্টের বিরুদ্ধে কোন আইনে কি ব্যবস্থা নিতে পারেন লিগালি প্রথম কথা হচ্ছে আমি কপিরাইট এখনো আসিনি যখন কপিরাইট আসবো তখন আমি হয়তো অ্যাড্রেস করব কিন্তু লিগালি কি করতে পারে সেটা আমি আজকে করবো না কারণ এটা বেসিক ইন্ট্রোডাকশন তো লিগালি কি করা যায় সেটা আপনাকে সেটা আলাদা পার্ট সেটা ওখানে ওখানে কপিরাইট অ্যাক্টের মধ্যে প্রভিশন আছে যে প্রভিশন অনুযায়ী আপনি যে কোনো সিভিল কোর্টে গিয়ে কেস করতে পারেন ওই প্রভিশনগুলোর উপরে যে আমার এটা এ করেছে সেটা কেস করা যাবে সেটা আমি আজকে কভার করব না বাট আপনি জিজ্ঞেস করে বলে বললাম যে সিভিল যে কোনো কোর্টে গিয়ে কেস করতে পারে এবং এটা বলতে পারে যে আমার এটা ইউজ করা হয়েছে এবং আমি এটার হয় রেকগনিশন চাই বা আমি রিমোনারেশন চাই বা আমার বা আমার রেপুটেশন রেপুটেশনের প্রবলেম হচ্ছে বা কিছু হচ্ছে তার জন্য আমার একটা অ্যামাউন্ট আমার চাই সেটা করতে পারে এবং সেটা সেটা সিভিল স্যুট হবে আমার হয়ে উনি সব কাজ করবেন এবার সে লয়ার সেভাবে ওনার হয়ে সবকিছু করবে কিন্তু রাইটটা তো ওনার মানে লেখাটা ওনার রাইটার তো এবং এবার টেন পার্সেন্ট বা কিছু টেন একটা লাইনও যদি কপিরাইটে যদি একটা ওয়ার্ডও যদি চেঞ্জ করা হয় ভায়োলেশন অফ দ্যাট কপিরাইট তো সেখানে আমরা চেঞ্জ করতে পারি না এবার সেক্ষেত্রে কিছু কিছু এক্সেপশন আছে কখন আমরা করতে পারি কখন করতে পারি না সেই এক্সেপশনগুলো আমি যখন কপিরাইটে আসবো তখন আমি বলবো যে এক্সেপশনগুলো কি আছে হয়তো আমি 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 কোনো বই নিয়ে আমি কলেজে পড়াচ্ছি বা আমি কোনো রিভিউ দিচ্ছি কোনো একটা বইয়ের সেসব ক্ষেত্রে আমি কোট করলাম হয়তো কোনো বই থেকে সেগুলো আমি করতে পারি সেগুলো আলাদা এক্সেপশনের মধ্যে আছে সেগুলো আমি পরে আসবো যখন কপিরাইট আসবো আমি এখন হ্যাঁ পেটেন্টটা আমি কভার করছি এখন Okay, now I'll explain the, I will explain section 3 and section 4 of the Patent Act. So, what are barred from patentability? Okay, so who is the patent? So, I will explain that. So, what is not patentable? First one is an invention contrary to well-established natural laws, for example, perpetual motion, gravitation force, etc. 
so suppose something uh, i have i have made something which is going against the natural laws that is not patentable suppose i'm i'm I, i made something and i'm saying that there is no such uh, there is no such thing as gravitational force so that i can't pet, i i, I can make patent on that second an invention contrary to laws of public health and morality for example i have prepared one drug or any food items or any drinks which is uh, which is not good for health or is not going against the public health or which is going against morality suppose i have um, i have made i have made something which is not uh, uh, not moral with the indian society so that we can't uh, uh, that is going against the public uh, and that is going against the morality of the uh morality of the country so this morality thing is uh, uh, it's a, i mean it's a relative thing so it depends on country to country suppose uh, in india someone has made a sex toy so that is immoral in the concept of uh, indian indian society so maybe india will not give patent on that but in us they accept this thing so in us they will uh, they will give patent for that but in india which is going against morality and this is very sub subjective and it changes from time to time so we can't get patent on that so we can file it and then we'll see whether uh, the indian patent office or indian society has evolved to take this thing or not so that uh, that that is a subjective matter third thing is the mere discovery of scientific principles or formal formulation of an abstract theories or mere discovery of any living things or non living substance occurring in a nature so uh, this abstract abstract theories is not patentable or something um, suppose i uh, i mean uh, uh, i went somewhere um like i went to, i went to a amazon forest and i have discovered uh, some new living living sub living substance new animal or something and i i say that okay i'll i'll take patent on this i can't do that then mere discovery of any new property or new use of a known substance unless the efficacy of the substance is increased or mere use of a known process or machine is non patentable suppose which is known which is known to the public uh, like the same thing the novelty what i said which is known to the public Uh, it cannot be patentable but sub something is known to the public but uh, i have i have changed that uh, i have changed that thing and now it is more advanced than the previous one then i can take patent on that now substance obtained by mere admixture resulting only in the aggregation of the properties of the component is not patentable so for example i have a uh, i have a pencil i have a rubber now i put a rubber above the pencil and the top of the pencil i, I have attached the rubber and at the top of the pencil now i can't say that see this is a new product so this is a mere, i mean this is a mere uh, i mean uh, mere uh, arrangement so the rubber will work in his own um, i mean rubber will work in his uh, um, what i say uh what uh, the uh, uh, i'm not getting the term um the rubber will do his own principal work and the pencil will do its own principal work so this we can if we combine also then they are not a new product they are individually they are working uh, as their own so that is not patentable so like that also uh, okay and mixer at mixer means suppose i have one chemical composition what i said i have another chemical composition a and chemical composition b now i have added a plus b now the output what is coming that has the that there is any, there is no any new anything it that is the same um, i mean same uh, what to say same features of a and the same features of b so suppose uh, there is a i made one um, sarbat so i have a syrup i have a water so water has different different composition syrup has different composition and i have mixed mixed water and syrup together and i made a sarbat and so so i can't say that this is this is a new thing because in that sarbat the the um, uh, i mean 
the composition of water is there and the composition of syrup is there and it's not making any new product out of that which is uh, which is not going against the features of um, water or against the feature of features of that um, syrup so it's just a mixer mixer of two things so that is not patentable oh sorry i think i have missed uh, one more one slide okay i i i I'll, I'll just explain tell <laughs> okay these are the things uh, one more thing the abstract ideas and algorithms all these things are non patentable suppose you have uh, you uh, you, have, you have some uh, mathematical mathematical formula you have been made some mathematical mathematical formula or something and um, uh you have invented some algorithm uh those things is not patentable computer software that is non not patentable uh, non patentable uh, you can't you can't uh, patent computer software per se so the term per se is used uh, in the patent act which says that computer program per se is not patentable but in some cases we can use uh, we can patent computer program like um, suppose there is a uh, processor uh, in a computer and a memory and in the processor it uh, um, i have a simple simple computer program like chat like chat box i have ma I, I, ma i made one chat box it's a very simple thing it's taking data from uh, from the background and it's uh, doing its own process like that so this is not patentable this is very basic thing and this is a computer it's a simple computer program and that's why it's not patentable but how uh, how i can do a patent i prepared one system i i made one system i have inputting some data i have i have some software and it's um uh, it's process it's process some data and uh, uh, it can predict Uh, like what i have given example it can predict the earthquake the machine i prepared it can predict the earthquake with the data which is available in the um, uh, is available in the market and so this this thing and this this data is processed in a specific software and uh, is giving one output that output is useful for us because that output is saying that when can when uh, when the earthquake can happen or it can predict the earthquake so this thing can be patentable so this is um, i mean there are a lot lot of um, court cases in uh, in this regard there are a lot of cases are there in this regard so this is little complicated but simply we can say that uh, computer computer program is not patentable uh, one more thing is not patentable that is uh, um, uh, the design of a integrated circuit uh, i mean those who are from science they know that uh, in ic there are some specific um the ic they have some specific design in that in the ic board they have some specific design so if someone wants to uh, take patent on that they can they can do that uh, they can do that there is a separate uh, uh, separate act for that there is a patent uh, i mean for integrated circuit there is a separate act so they have to take protection from there okay okay now say who who can apply for patent so other the person who can apply for patent first a true and first inventor who holds the rightful ownership in the invention they can apply for patent so who is who can apply the inventor can apply who has created that uh, invention they can apply for patent second one a person who is an assignee or legal representative of the first and true inventor they can um file the patent like the example what i said there there is a college uh, college authority and the uh, and the professor is working under the college authority professor has created something or he he has invented he has invented something and um, but the right but he has assigned his right to the college he has said that okay i am working under i am working under you i am using your resources your lab um your uh, i mean i'm getting i'm getting paid from you 
i am getting money from you so it's okay and so i will uh, i will work on the on the invention but what what i will invent that the invention i will assign to you to the college authority so the college authority is the, so the college authority can file the patent on behalf of the inventor so in the uh, at the time of filing so uh, at the time of filing there is a two there is a col columns where there is you can specify the inventor name and where you have to specify where you have to specify the applicant name applicant means who is filing the invention if inventor is the applicant if inventor himself is filing then uh, inventor name uh, will be his name and in the applicant name also will be his name who is the inventor so if the both the persons are same then in that case both applicant and inventor will be the same but if inventor and applicant is different then um, then the inventor name will be mentioned as well as the applicant name will be mentioned but the applicant will be the sole right holder of that patent okay uh, third one is a legal heir of the first and true inventor in case of demise of the true and first inventor they can file suppose someone has died and he made only one invention then his legal heir can file on behalf of his okay so now i will tell the uh, procedure for grant of a patent uh, how the patent is filed and how it is granted so first is uh, filing of a patent application along with the required documents so first we have to file the patent application uh, who can file i just told you who can file the patent application so they can file a patent application nowadays i mean there are two types of uh, there are two types of filing uh, one is online and one is offline uh, offline you have to send all the documents to the patent office there are four patent offices in uh, uh, kolkata chennai <coughs> delhi and mumbai so you have to send all the documents to patent offices that is offline and for online filing they have uh, online portal and in online portal uh, you have to go and you have to uh, file the uh, i mean you have to upload all the documents and you can file it uh, but the thing is for patent filing patent agent uh, a patent agent signature is required you can't file it yourself suppose you um, suppose the professor which uh, who, who thinks who, who, uh, professor or a student uh, wants to file a patent so um, they can file a patent but they has to take signature of the patent agent so except uh, the patent agent they can't file its own okay so this is the first part of filing a patent agent so first they have to go um, go online portal of the ipo uh, in the indian patent office then they can upload everything and they can file it so this is the first thing then after filing the patent after 18 months the patent will be published okay so uh, so uh, okay i'll i'll come later on how uh, i mean what are the documents you have to file i mean what uh, what will be there in the documents which you will file that will that will come later okay so you have you have filed a patent now after 18 months it will be published in the journal now it is available for the public for everyone to see whether uh, i mean what what you have submitted okay so first is i have filed it then that what i have filed it that will be published in the patent uh, that will be published in the official journal and it will be uh, publicly available then we have to file request for examination then i have to i have to tell them okay i have filed a patent now what you will do you examine my patent uh, so what uh, examine my patent means they will search they will do searching and they will see whether what you have what you have submitted whether the novelty and no and inventive uh, inventive uh, uh, criteria were met or not that they will check so that is that we have to file a request for examination why this request for examination is there because sometimes many people think that i have filed a patent after 18 months of publication um, he may think that okay uh, okay i don't want to go because this is a, uh, because there is a um, money involved in this in this so maybe he will think that okay i have published it i have filed a patent i have published it now i don't want to um, go for 
uh, go for uh, patent or I, I i will not i will not pursue in this patent so uh, so they will they can they can do that because uh, they will not file a request for examination and the examiner will not request um, and the examiner will, will not uh, examine the patent application and it will uh, i mean uh, it will not uh, uh, go to the next stage so uh, this is a uh, tactics many people do i mean those who are from academic or those who are from uh, yeah um, scientists also they do suppose i have um, i made one invention and i have filed a patent now uh, after after 18 months after one and a half year i thought that okay my what i have invented uh, now that is old fashioned and i can't use it um, i can't use it uh, i mean i can sell it so this is the old thing the new the new thing has come the advanced thing has come so what i have invented that is not useful at all for the market then they think okay then there is no point of uh, spending so much money in this patent so they will say okay i will not do examination of this patent and i will make it i, I will go it abundant and i will not go further i will not spend any money on that so that they can do at this stage also they can do okay so i have filed a request for examination after request for examination okay now there is a pre grant opposition is there what is pre grant opposition so after 18 months my patent is published now the other any some other person uh, may see that okay are i also i also made the same thing uh, long back and i have also published the thing but uh, now some other person has uh, published uh, this thing now they say okay i, I will say, i will say pre grant opposition i will say no 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 what what is what the what the person has filed that is that is not novel that is not novel that is that is well known see this is this is the proof i have the proof that this is well known so this is not uh, this will uh, this will not be granted so that also they can do at pre grant stage before grant okay so now i have filed a request for examination now the examination will start then the, now the examiner will check whether this thing the same thing is available in the uh, market or not whether it is novel or not after seeing that then they will send a uh, examination report to the applicant what is the examination report in examination report they will say see what you, what you have submitted this is the invention we found two more inventions similar to this invention so you have to check it and you have to tell what are the uh, i mean what are the advanced thing advanced advancement you have made or or what are the or what are the changes uh, what are the advance what are the advanced thing you have made and just show me what is the difference between this what is the difference between these references okay so what are the difference between these two so they will uh, the examiner will the examiner will send this the examiner will send this and um, they will ask then we will say that okay okay so what the examiner what the examiner said is not correct uh, okay just hold on just hold on i'm making some noise here oh just hold on hello uh sorry okay okay now uh, now the examination started and the, the uh, patent office will send some uh, uh, send one examination report to us to saying that see uh, what what you have invented that is not new i i got some uh, two or three more 
uh, inventions uh, there. So see, check this invention and uh, just tell us what are the difference between your invention and these these two three inventions. Then we'll uh, we'll submit a reply to that and we'll say, uh, uh, sir, what you are selling telling is not correct. What you said that this invention is uh, different than our invention in this this part is different. So it's uh, it's novel and inventive. Okay, then we have filed a reply. After filing the reply, then again, uh, if he is satisfied, if the examiner is satisfied, then they will grant it. If they are not satisfied, then they will say, okay, I'm not satisfied with that. You come to hearing, uh, you come to face to face, into uh, face to face, and then we'll discuss. Then they will come to face to face, and they will discuss uh, about the, uh, and they will discuss. Uh, directly okay okay what you have said i'm not satisfied with that can you explain it again or or they can raise the new new i mean new references also like in the hearing they will say okay what you have said that is correct that that uh, what i have cited in that uh, two three invention what i have cited you have overcome those references but i got two more references two more new references which is similar to your invention now you tell me what's the difference in that so that in a hearing they will do and in the hearing stage if uh, if you satisfy them them if you say that okay uh, my if you can prove that my invention is uh, far more advanced to the them uh, for advance uh, against them then the controller the examiner will say okay okay i'm satisfied what you have said now the patent is granted then even after the patent is granted they can then the it will be published in their official journal see with the patent number and all and it will publish it after that again it will again it will any person can file post grant opposition any person can come and say oh you have uh, you have granted this patent no this is not correct i have the, i have uh, something which is similar to this thing you can't grant it then they will show that to see this thing you can't uh, you can't grant it then if if the examiner uh, examiner is satisfied if the examiner said okay okay no 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 no, no. This what you are. We are so it's what you are showing that is different than us. Uh, then it's okay. If it is not different, then he will he can cancel or he can revoke the patent. So this is a whole process of uh, pet, uh, whole process of uh, filing of patent to grant of patent. Uh, okay, uh, I uh, I was little fast because uh, because the time constant. So later on, uh, I will when I take questions, that time you can ask. Something. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Achha, okay, uh, so when I uh, when we file, there are two types of patent. One is provisional specification, and one is complete specification. So these are the technical things. I don't. Uh, I will not go in detail on this. Uh, maybe uh, later on you can go through. It. So provisional specification is suppose I uh, today um, I have some. I I have invented something, and that is not. Uh, I have not documented properly that invention. Then what I will do? I will file provisional specification. Provisional specification, I will take the date. Why I need the date? Suppose I am working on some invention and the other person is also working on the same invention. Now I have some breakthrough in my invention and I want to, but, uh, but um, I want to protect it. I want to protect it, but I, I don't have clear, I mean, I don't have a detailed uh, uh, documentation of that invention. So what I will do, I will file a provisional specification. What provisional specification means? I'll just inform the patent office that see, I am working in this thing. See, these are these are my uh, ideas, and um, so you just protect. You just take this date that I am filing it. So he will take that date. Now, if any person with the same idea comes, then they will say, okay, okay, no, 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 you can't come because he has already filed the specification. Okay, after the provisional specification, within one year, you have to submit a complete specification. So provisional the complete specification is a complete write-up you have to submit. You have to submit with description and claims, everything. So that is a uh, so in in uh, yeah, you uh, you can you can file complete specification in the first time itself, or you can file a provisional specification and after one year you can file a complete specification. 
so complete specification contains two things description and claims this claims is what you want to protect uh, and the description is uh, so if you see some patents i think um, uh, i think many of you have seen lot of patent a uh, lot of patents so they will know what is claims and what is a um, uh, what is a description so claims is what i want to protect and description is uh, to support that claims um, how support that claims that how i this uh, how i made the descriptive part of that and how i am how i am explaining my claims in that so these are the two things the time of filing we have to save so i'll not go in detail on this because these are the core technical things okay so patent uh, okay so uh, i have covered patent okay so i think i I'll, i'll take questions at the last uh, that will be good mm, okay uh now uh, i'll come to the now i'll come to copyright now copyright is is uh, copyright refers to the legal right of the owner of the intellectual property in simple terms copyright is a right uh, to copy this means the original creator or products and anyone they have authorized to or they only wants the exclusive right to produce uh, reproduce the work what does it mean suppose i am a copyright holder means i am the writer and in that case i can copy my write up n number of times i can copy it or who can copy i have giving some someone i have assigned my right to someone they can also reproduce or they can also copy my work so that's why that copyright uh, thing comes okay one more thing the for the patent the patent registration is compulsory i mean the patent if you want to protect patent you have to registered you have to file it and you have to do all the processes and you have to, you have to get registered in a patent office okay but copyright is not mandatory registration that i will come later okay so the second point is copyright law gives creators of original materials the exclusive right to further use and duplicate that material for a given amount of time what i've said the same thing okay overview of copyright law author or creator of the work owns the copyright i mean who is the author or who is the creator they owns the copyright author of the creator may transfer ownership to another person or entity in which case that the person or entity is considered the owner so that means i have i have written something and uh, i have written one book and i have given it to my publisher and he can publish it so he now the publisher is the owner of that um, owner of that uh, uh, write up or owner of that book the third thing is owner of the copyright has the exclusive right to control how to work is used distributed and displayed so this thing i will come later on so this is a this is a exclusive right of the uh, author so that will come later how copyright is created copyright arises as soon as the work is fixed in a tangible medium so when copyright is created so I, uh, uh, what i told that copyright is not the copyright registration is not mandatory so whenever you have written something when i whenever you have created something that is copyrightable by you so that means example is when the work is written recorded painted photographed or typed and saved to a computer hard drives or other data storage medium that is uh, that you are the uh, you are the sole uh, owner of that there is no second point there is no need to have work officially published or to have work officially registered so what i have given the what i have said that you don't have to register it and you have don't have to publish it suppose you have made uh, uh, we have written one manuscript and you have kept in your uh, in your drawer for uh, like in your drawer then after uh, 10 years someone has come and someone has stolen that manuscript and he has published it in that case you you, you have the right of that copyright copyrighted work mm. but this this work is not published anywhere this work is not registered anything but you have that right because you are the owner you have the um, uh, you are the uh, sole uh, i mean sole parent of that uh, thing so you will have the right so what is protected by copyright so what can be protected by copyright so literary works or printed materials dramatic work uh dramatic works and music photographs musical work uh, company work artistic work sound recording 
architectural works software content found on the internet and web pages so everything is everything can be copyrighted now this example will be uh, i mean uh, it is uh, you'll understand better when i buy a book music cd or magazine what i am buying so you have only purchased suppose you have purchased one book so you have only purchased a copy of the work not the work itself so suppose there is some writer and you have purchased the book so you have not uh, purchased the original copy what the writer has written not that one you are you are purchasing the copy of that work so you have limited right to use that one copy for a personal use so that 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 copy what you have what you have bought that you can use your personal use like you can read it or you can uh, you can use your personal work or you can refer it or something you can do but you can you can't make the copy of it you can um, for you can go to the photocopy shop and you can do the photocopy out of it that you are not authorized to do so the fourth thing is you gain no other rights in the copyrighted work what i have said uh, you have the right to do as you wish that the copy and only the copy however you do not have the right to make additional copies so you can have that book but you cannot do additional copies you can't go to the uh, uh, copy and photocopy center and you can do the photocopy of your purchased copy nor you have the right to distribute additional copies what you have purchased so what are the rights associated with the copyright so under copyright law only copyright owner have the exclusive right to do or allow others to do so the copyright owner owner i mean who is the right holder of that uh, copyrighted work so, uh, so what they can do or they can assign someone to do that that is one is reproduce suppose make copies of their works publicly or privately adapt prepare additional works derived from the copyrighted work distributed means i have i have given the right to any public publi uh, pub publisher he can publish it and then distribute it perform he can uh, i mean perform work publicly suppose i have um, i am a composer and there is a lyricist there is a composer lyricist has the literary uh, literary right composer has this composing right so they have done something and now i am a singer i have taken rights from the lyricist and i have taken rights from the composer now i can perform i can perform uh, outside because i have the right i have taken permission from the composer also i have taken permission from the lyricist also now i can perform uh, perform my own so that i can do display means i have suppose i have i bought something from uh, some artist and now i am the owner of that uh, on the uh, Uh, of that or of that photographs and so i can display it also so these are the rights associated with the copyright now there are in copyright this is uh, very important there are two types of rights this one is moral right and one is economic right so this moral right is very uh, i mean it's very much um, uh, specific to uh, copyright in no other intellectual property we have this right this moral rights is very important Uh, so i will explain what is moral moral right so first i will go to economic right what is the economic right so economic right is right of reproduction making copies storage in a computer memory these are economic right right to distribution right to communication to the public public performance all these things will go to uh, economic right then adaptation suppose i uh, i purchased one i purchased one uh, book uh, from a author then i made a movie uh, of that book that i can do i don't have to take separate permission for that i can i have i bought that book um, i bought that book i have taken permission from that person that okay i am uh, taking your uh, i am i have purchased your book and i have taking permission that this is uh, this is your original work and i will make movie on that that i can do uh, right to make cinematograph films and movie what i have said translation I, i i have uh, i have taken right from the um, copyright uh, on the copyright holder and then i am translating that uh, uh, copyright uh, copyrighted thing uh, and then i am distributing it that i can do rental uh, uh, rental also i can do i mean resell also i can do okay now this is very important what is moral rights this is solely um, um, 
the, this right is solely with the, is with the, is is with respect to uh, copyright we can't uh, get in this type of right in any other intellectual property right so the right of pet, uh, so there are moral rights are two types one is the right of paternity one is right of integrity so right of paternity refers to the right of an author to claim authorship of work and a right to prevent all other from claiming the authorship of work so what is that suppose uh, you purchase some painting from some uh, good painter or something then what you have done Uh, see, uh, suppose there is a signature uh, in the uh, in the below. There is a signature of the painter. What you have done? You have removed the signature and you put your own signature. That you can't do, because that is going against the moral rights. So you have purchased that picture. You are the sole uh, proprietor of that picture, but you can't tamper with the picture. You can't change the paternity with the picture. I mean, you can't say also that okay, this picture is drawn by me. You purchase something. that that is okay you have money you purchase it but you can't say that this painting is uh, uh, done by me that you can do that is a right of paternity that is also moral right and right of integrity the second is right of integrity that is this is also very important what is right of integrity the right of integrity empowers the author to prevent distortion mutilation or other uh, alteration of his work or any other things would be prejudice to his honor and reputation how suppose i purchased one painting then i have modified that painting i uh, suppose i purchase a painting of a an angel then i have modified and made it a demon i put a horn in the head of the angel and i i have did i i painted i repainted it all these things i have done that you can't do though you have, you have purchased that product you are the owner of that you are the owner of that product but you can't do that because that is going against the honor of the artist similarly suppose um, suppose you said uh, the you said writer that okay i am purchasing your um, write up i uh, write up uh, your manuscript and i publish it then the publisher didn't publish it that is that is also going a uh, that is also going the owner of the or reputation of the author so he can go and he can say that okay see what you have done that is this is not correct this is going on my ethics and moral thing other thing is moral rights cannot be assigned so this is the absolute right this is this moral rights is absolute right and and it cannot be assigned to other person like uh, how suppose um, i i i made one painting and i said okay i'm uh, i'm telling that you can't do anything uh, anything you want with my painting that also you can't say because that is a moral right is given by the law and you can't uh, allocate to any other person whatever is given to you you have to uh, i mean you have to enjoy that right you can't give to other person so uh, okay i'll i'll give one i'll give one example uh okay yeah uh this amarnath i'll i'll give one case case law um, okay one is amarnath versus union of india in this case law what happened amarnath is a, is a very renowned um sculpt sculpturist so he made one sculpture and he sold that sculpture to uh, india government and the government uh, they put that uh, bronze sculpture they put that sculpture uh, in a central of a um, in a specific government building then what uh, they have done after some times they have removed this sculpture and they put it into the um, store room and then it uh, somehow it it broke and that person who is the uh, who made that sculpture he get to, he get, he got to know about this and he went to court and he said see uh i made this sculpture with um, and and he he made it uh, in 5 years he took 5 years to make that sculpture then he went to court and said see i made this sculpture 5 years and this is my best uh, best sculpture uh, till now and i sold it uh, to the government and then they have removed it from there and i think it's going against my honor uh, against my honor so they, he has taken this thing uh, this moral rights thing uh, has taken help from this moral rights 
then court said okay yeah this this is true uh, what what you are saying this is going against your moral thing because you made this sculpture and they have not respected this sculpture they have put it into the um, uh, into the um, uh, store room so they have disobeyed it i mean uh, they have not honored it so the government has to pay you so they have they have paid 5 lakh rupees to him at that time in i think in 1980 or something that time they have paid that much amount to that uh, to that artist so so this is the power of the moral rights in copyright act okay now there is exception in copyright infringement act this is a very long section this infringement section so you can uh, I, i put some of it uh if you if you are interested you can check uh, section 52 of copyright act there you will see what are the exceptions so i'll just read it out so private or personal use including research for research purpose you can use the copyright um, you can copyright the material uh, criticism or review purpose whether of that work or any other work uh, you can uh, you can take uh, uh, you can take a, book, a specific portion of the book and you can criticize it you can review it that you can do uh the reporting of current events and current affairs including the reporting of a lecture delivered in public the reproduction of any work for the purpose of judicial proceedings uh suppose you are quoting something in your judicial proceedings in a court that is also uh, okay uh, it's not violation of copyright uh the re reproduction of any work by teacher or people in the course of instructions as a part of questions to be answered suppose in question paper um, the professor has quoted some quote from any book that is okay that is not a violation of the copyright or in the answer sheet um the students they have quoted something uh, which is copy uh, uh, which is copyrighted but he has quoted that in answer sheet so that is um, it's not a violation of copyright the performance in the course of activities of education institution of a literary dramatic or musical work by the staff and students of the institution um or a cinema or a cinematography film or sound recording also so, uh, basically what it says that suppose there is a um, there was there's a song now there's a there's a movie so that movie you are playing in your uh, college fest or something in that college fest only the teachers the students and the parents are involved in that case that is a not a violation of copyright act but if there's a other person suppose you are um, Yeah, uh, there is a fest, and in that in the college fest, the outsider people are coming into into that, and they are listening to that song or listening to that music or anything. That is a violation of copyright. So this is interesting. Okay, the reproduction in a newspaper, magazine, other religious topic that is um, is not a violation. Okay, the storing of work in a medium by electronic means by non-commercial public library. So, uh, suppose in 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 a library, what you have done, you have a book and you are, you want to make it. You are you are going to digitization process and you have scanned all your book and you have kept it in your library. So that is not a violation of copyright. Uh, the production or publication of translation in Indian language, if you are making any translation, that is also not copyrighted. Okay, the performance of literary, dramatic, and musical work on the communication to the public of such a work or sound recording in the course of bona fide religious ceremony, or oh, like there is some uh, in the religious ceremony. Uh, uh, yeah, in the religious uh, suppose there is a religious ceremony, you are in, you are um, uh, playing some religious song, then uh, that is not a violation of a copyright. Uh, even in the government, in a government purpose, uh, if you are using it, that is also not a violation. Okay, so securing a copyright. How you can secure your copyright? So what I said uh, in the beginning that copyright is not compulsory of registration at that time. Uh, at that time, you have uh, you made that thing. You made um, uh, copyrighted material. That time, you are the that time only. You are from that time only. You are the owner of the copyright. okay voluntary registration you can register it if you want if you, you can go uh, there is a process of registration you can uh, online process is there you can register it if you want if you wish you can register that copyright material okay so now the duration of copyright for literary dramatic musical and artistic work it's life plus 60 years means the life or uh, life span of the author or musician then from that time after his death plus is 60 years till 60 years he will um, uh, that the, uh, the material will be copyrighted and after that it will go to the public domain 
and all other works 60 years on a date of publication like work of government uh, organization of cinema sound recording photographs so that is which is published that is 60 years from the publication okay now i have completed copyright act now i'll go to this is a small uh, thing the trademark what is trademark like uh, everywhere we can see that name of a enterprise of a mark like lux godrej tvs apple these are the trademarks so trademarks so who, uh, so this is only for trade purpose so if i'm doing business and i want to uh, have mark on that then i can do that then trademark can be for signs words letters numbers drawings pictures shape of goods colors combination like in google they have some specific color combination in that uh, in the write up in google you will see there are uh, multiple colors uh, is involved in that so that that is uh, that uh, you can get trademark on that uh, particular color combinations in that uh, shape of goods uh, i have explained that bottle you say that that also you can get trademark on that uh smell also you'll get trademark suppose you have um, you have created one perfume and a specific perfume and you can take trademark on that you have to submit a uh, chemical composition of that perfume to the uh, trademark office and you can get trademark on that uh, like sound also uh, you will get a specific sound you will get like a um, nokia phone you will see there are some specific tone tune is there in the beginning of the uh, when you start your phone that is that is uh, that has trademark for nokia so kinds of trademarks are different kinds of trademark one is certification trademark that is you can uh, that is in gold you will see the hallmarks so that is a certification trademark uh, another well known uh, okay now another one is a well known marks well known mark is coca cola okay and uh, these thing these are the things which you have a well known mark so what is well known marks well known mark which is known to the public right and uh, suppose uh, in coca coca cola coca cola is a well known mark for the drinks not for the other things suppose coca cola has made um, uh, made a fridge then uh, you will see okay this fridge is made by coca cola then uh, you you will have some doubt how how it is possible so like that this is a well known mark for the drink only the coca cola drink like tobron also it's a specific brand of the chocolate if he, if they prepare if they made some other thing then you will have a doubt that okay this this product is only for the chocolate why they are selling this thing like that this is the well this is called a well known mark and other thing is trade names like godrej you can see godrej tv i mean godrej fridge godrej almira godrej furnitures all these things so they they are into different different uh, different different things but yeah when you see the name of godrej then you have uh, then in the back of the mind uh, you will i mean you will um uh, it it will happen that okay godrej is a brand name and i will purchase some furniture refrigerator all these things in that uh, in that name okay acha in trademark registration also it's not trademark registration is not mandatory so sometimes you will say you will see in um, a lot of places that Uh, above the name they will write tm in small short they will write tm that means it's a trademark is a well known mark but it's not registered that's why they write tm and in some places you will say r in the in a round inside the round uh, in the, inside the circle you'll say uh, you'll see r that means it is registered when they have applied for the trademark and they got registered and that, that's why it's coming like that uh but the thing is trademark is not mandatory suppose tata salt tata salt we all know the tata company products and all they don't need they don't need to register it because it is a well known mark everyone everyone knows that um, that uh, this product that tata is a brand name so they don't need uh, for registration it's by default they are um, they are enjoying the trademark rights for that um okay so trademark uh, okay i have completed trademark now the gi uh, its geographical indication is an indication which identifies good as agricultural goods natural goods manufactured goods or originating or manufactured in a country quality reputation characteristic all these things um, i have given example that tirupati laddu in the beginning and um, kolkata rasgulla uh, and uh, uh, like dehradun rice all these things because they are the sp- uh, and there is i mean they are specifying the specific region of that product 
so um, so uh, they are indicating the geographic place like dehradun rice you will get so you will get to know this this rice is produced in dehradun so this is special this, this is a indication of that specific place of the geographical place so that's why it's called geographical indication so this geographical indication is uh, gi is valid for 10 years and its registration is mandatory so i mean so the, you have to register uh, there otherwise you will not gain, you can't you can't enjoy that uh, gi they will get some gi tag also so you can put that gi after getting registered you will get gi tag and you can you can put the gi tag in the product itself okay now uh, now i have a uh, couple of sides slides left okay now the thing is uh, how the how the monetary monetary benefit you will get from this ip so there is ip licensing and technology transfer so what is ip licensing licensing is a permission granted by an ip owner to another person so licensing creates an income source is still a legal framework for transfer of technologies to wider group and creates market presence of technology or trademark like uh, suppose i am i am the inventor or i am the author and thing i can give license to other person suppose i am i am the author and i am giving license to um, a producer of the movie uh, cinematographic film producer i say that okay i am giving license to make movie out of my uh, out of my literature that you can do and i will get some uh, i will get some amount or i can get money from that so that licensing i can give and the licensing so this is these are the licensing or technology transfer i can transfer my uh that's my patent right to other person also uh so licensing what is the what are the licensing conditions for ipr owner of the ip prefer to transfer technology through licensing agreement only all rights or limited rights can be licensed can be exclusive or non exclusive or sole so what is exclusive right what is non exclusive licensing licensing exclusive licensing means if i give license i <coughs> the licensor can enjoy, i mean the licensee can enjoy everything so suppose i am I, i have a book and i have giving license to some other person he can uh, he can uh, copy it he can uh, publish it he can make movie out of it he can make song out of it anything he can do that is exclusive license another is non exclusive license non exclusive license is i am giving i am giving a license and i am saying i am barring someone okay i'll give okay uh, i have i am giving my book to a producer and 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 uh, so to a publisher and i say that okay you can pu- you can only publish my book but you can you can't uh, make movie out of my book that is a non exclusive license that is not exclusive you are barring some um, some rights you are giving some rights and you are barring other other rights so that is non exclusive license and uh, like we know that in royalty payment also suppose, suppose i am a lyricist i am a, a composer and all these things i will get royalty from um, from the song or from the uh, from the song which i have written or from from the song which i have given music for that okay so these are the things which uh, how uh, um, i can um, monetize my uh, ipr rights that so that's the end of my slide so i have to go fast because that for the time constraint yeah now i can take uh, questions if you have any uh sir i have a question mm. hello hello yeah i can i can hear you yes <clears throat> is there any specific areas of process patent and product patent and the next question about uh, if you kindly highlight regarding oh. utility patent Mm, yeah, uh, a specific area means so what do you want to ask? I, I'm not getting. Suppose someone is applic- ma- 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 making application for the patent. Hmm. So whatever patent uh, the applicant can get, whether process or product, does it matter regarding the product? Yeah, yeah. It depends on the. It depends on your invention. Wow. I have given one example, right? Suppose you are pr- you are making one transmitter. Okay, now the. the product of transmitter you have the uh, you have the antenna you have the other transmitting part and all these things that is a product that is not a process right so you can take patent for that product for the specific product you have ic i am mean, not ic you have the processor you have three processors you have memory everything you have and you are taking a 
patent for that specific product not the working of that product right now anyway suppose 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 uh, anyone uh, invent regarding the <coughs> aids vaccine or cancer uh, medicine yeah so what type of patent can be claimed from this so the product or process no this you have to get the process for that this is not a product Thank you, uh, Dr. Abdihari Hudli, HOD uh, Department. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and now I would like to invite Dr. Shaili Chaudhary to uh, take some oh, questions. Sir, I have a, I have a question, sir. Okay. Yeah. Sir, uh, PDF files of different books are available on the internet. Yeah. Suppose somebody download it and get it printed. Is it? Uh, yeah, is it's it a copyright violation. violation. Yeah, yeah, of is course, it's a copyright violation. Okay, okay. And another thing that uh, somebody, particularly in this pandemic situation, we uh, many persons uh, we find, we see that they take the uh, they take a picture of that of a page of a book and share it with the student. Is it uh, copyright violation? No, if he if he's using it in the uh, in academic purpose, then it's not a copyright violation. That will come under the exception under Copyright Act. But if he's uh, exploiting that thing, then uh, yeah, it's a violation. If he is using for uh, any um, uh, like any commercial purpose, then uh, it's a violation. Okay. Another question: uh, you, you told that, that there is no need for registration of copyright uh, yeah. for any uh, written mat material. Suppose yeah. I I have written uh, some uh, matter or well, some class note. Ah, mm -hmm. It is my own work. Can I write copyright on the on that page? Yeah, you can write it. It's gotcha. your own work. You can write it anyway. If you if you don't write it also, then also it's a copyrighted work of yours. Gotcha. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. Uh, just before this question, someone, uh, some, uh, someone is asking one question. I just, I, I just want to go through that question. Uh, can you come again? Uh, just before these questions. Yes, yes. Uh, what is the word, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have asked some questions, and eh, regarding that vaccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ask you about utility, utility patent. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Utility. See, basically, in patent act. There are only two types of patent. One is product in India. One is product patent, and one is process process patent. There is no such thing called utility patent in India. So utility patent will come under the product patent. Okay, and uh, because if you see the act, act, act uh, in the whole act, nowhere it says the utility patent. In US, the concept is there. They have the utility patent thing, but in India, we don't have concept, and uh, it will come under the product patent only. And regarding the vaccination, I'll just uh, tell you the vaccination. What you have said, if there is a, pro uh, uh, you can take uh, product and process patent both in that. So process patent, you can uh, take. I mean, the composition and all. And how you are preparing that uh, vaccine? How you have made that vaccine? That process you can take patent of that. And uh, actually, sir, uh, if you don't actually after uh, initiation of globalization, so mm. actually process patent has gone. Most of the cases we see that is concerned to the product patent. Monopoly no, business no, no. is there. No, 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 process patent. No, no, process patent is there. I mean, we are filing. We are getting grant. Also, process patent. Uh, I don't know in which field you are saying. Maybe in uh, pharma or something. You are saying that I, I don't know because I'm not. I don't work in pharma, so or any medical thing. Uh, for that, uh, I generally I work in electronics and um, uh, this core uh, core technical the core uh, electronics, telecom, software, all these things. There we have product and process patent both, and we are uh, ge we are getting grant also. Even sometimes the examiner uh, don't grant product patent; they grant process patent. I don't know about other fields. I'm not sure about the other fields. Uh, the, uh, okay, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really yeah. it's a vast area, vast vast area. Yeah. Uh, in the present season. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sir, uh, number of areas already have been enlightened. Okay, I am from the beginning. Okay, a lot of knowledge is there. Okay. Uh, Go on. Uh, then uh, I have with us uh, uh, the program of this uh, program of uh, this webinar. Uh, 
Dr. Rashid Ponda, convener of the Students uh, Program and IQC coordinator and HOD Department of English. Dr. Rashid Ponda, uh, some questions and findings. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank our honorable resource person, uh, uh, Mr. Sheikh Mohammed Sagir, for offering our participants a very uh, illuminating session and uh, enriching them with uh, his expertise uh, on uh, deep, different aspects of uh, uh, IPR or different aspects of, uh, and I'm sure uh, that uh, by now our participants have acquired sufficient or adequate knowledge uh, regarding uh, different uh, aspects associated with trademark, patent, or GI or copyright. Uh, actually, I have a query, sir. Uh, I would like to know one thing from you uh, by referring to a particular situation. Uh, uh, and uh, the question is related with uh, uh, copyright. Uh, suppose uh, a famous poet uh, gave a poetry recital uh, at a seminar organized by a college or university. And on this occasion, uh, uh, she extemporized her poetry. Uh, that is, uh, she made it up on the spot. Now, a college student uh, with an exceptional memory uh, returned home afterwards uh, and wrote down from memory uh, one of the poet's extemporized poems. And the student also published it under a particular title. Now, the question is, uh, does the poet have a claim for copyright infringement against the student? And I have another question. Uh, yeah, first, first I will uh, explain okay, this, sir. then I will go okay. to the next question. Yeah, definitely it's a copyright violation. Uh, I said now, once, whenever uh, the thing is created, that time itself is the owner is the author or the writer or the uh, artist so oh. so whenever he has recited or something that that time itself he is the owner of that um, of that product so if someone has listened and someone has written in that it's a clearly a violation of a copyright but sir that is not uh, published that is not in published form uh, you mentioned during your lecture that it should be in published form no no i way. said i said it should not be published i told no in i said registration is not mandatory but uh, it may not be published i said that there is a manuscript it's lying on your table for 10 years then someone has stole it and someone has published it then that is also a copyright violation i said it now so it's just not like I, it not have to be published okay sir okay uh, then, sir, um, next question is, what about the musical composition? So, suppose uh, a renowned singer performed in a uh, program organized mm -hmm. by a uh, committee, cultural committee, and then mm -hmm. uh, some of the members of the organizing committee used the composition uh, in social media and started earning by posti posting it in YouTube. Now, mm -hmm. is it a case of violation of copyright? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's a violation of copyright. It's a chemical. It's a anything uh, any creative thing which is created by the author that is a uh, that he is a sole proprietor of that how can someone okay. can take take it and they can use it and they can say that okay we have taken or we are influenced by this person they can acknowledge it but uh, they can't take okay. it like that and without acknowledging it yeah. okay so then uh, according to you which area of intellectual property is the hardest to protect what do you think? Uh, hardest to protect is patent, definitely. Patent. Yeah. Copyright. See, in copyright, there is no checklist or nothing. Anything you write, anything oh. you do, that is copyright protected. It's not uh, depend on the intellectual also. Anything you write, it's copyright protected. Uh, so, but in uh, in patent, it's completely depend on the intellect of that person, or depend on the work what he's doing at that time. Uh, the the compete the competitor who are doing the same job in other field, uh, sorry, in the same field. All these things you have to look at at the time of patent. So that's why patent is costly also. So. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank sir, <coughs> sir, uh, does the copyright act vary from country to country? Yeah, it varies. But uh, how is uh, how yeah, is it strong? How is it strong in India? No, no, no. Varies means the copyright act is different, but all this, all this copyright, trademark, patent acts, all are governs uh, under um, uh, international uh, international treaties are there. So it follows the international treaty. So it can't go beyond that treaty. So almost all the countries, uh, the acts are almost same. 
little okay. bit different is there regarding the process but it's the uh, i mean the rights are almost same in all the countries but you have to take protection in individual countries acha acha thank you sir thank you uh, thank you dr konda and dr roy and uh, i would like to invite dr shaili choudhury to take some questions from uh, our participants is there any questions in our chat box Okay. Yes, we have we have two questions. Uh, since our speaker has uh, said that he will be addressing those questions at the end of the session, so I, uh, sir, may I pick up those questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm picking up the last question that is from Anamika Das. She has asked that can a academic content written as Facebook post be under copyright act? can a academic content written, written in a facebook post academic contents means he has taken from any publication or something uh, anamika das are you there with us now i don't think so anamika okay das actually if there. if they are taking any academic contents means they are taking uh, if he is citing any um, text from the books or text from the any publications and if he is posting that it is a clear violation of the copyright act because he is not uh, using solely for the purpose of academic yeah thank you thank you sir and uh, there is another question from anamika das in case of literary criticism suppose a very interesting finding has been discovered by a renowned scholar and that is stolen by a plagiarist how can the scholar take steps against the plagiarist uh, i think shall we see you have put this question in previous session okay she has already uh, i think uh, it has already discussed by mr sagit okay Fine. Then we don't have any further question. This is the only question we have. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your <coughs> elaborating and illuminating and descriptive lecture. Uh, thank you. So, uh, we have uh, reached at the end of our program for today's program, and uh, in the second half at the evening we have another program <coughs> on professional ethics. uh actually uh, it's uh, for teachers only and uh, so that uh, i'll invite you for our uh, next program and uh, at our college uh, already our principal have told uh, regarding this uh, discussion this very important and relevant in uh, present time and uh, i would like to invite dr sritama mishra member iqsc and uh, assistant professor department of philosophy uh, to extend her formal vote of thanks dr sridhar ms i hope i'm audible yeah absolutely okay good afternoon and i take this warm opportunity to announce the vote of thanks first of all my heartfelt gratitude go to Mohammad Sagir who is a legal associate from the law firm of Narendra Peta Bangalore Karnataka he gave a brief introduction and a detailed discussion on IPR and beautifully explained the various terms and concepts such as copyright patent criteria of patentability the related rights trademark GI and so on i am sure the talk created extremely good impact on the entire audience and the participants could get an overview on how ipr restricts copying others ideas and how this may help the development of new ideas for the betterment of society so thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation and delivering your extremely content loaded talk thank you so much thank you thank you next i would like to thank dr manobindra mondol the principal of belda college and chairperson of today's webinar for his constant inspiration and participation in this program without his support it would have been impossible for all of us to organize this webinar now i would like to thank the organizing committee of the event i would begin with the convener of the webinar dr ashit panda iqsc coordinator and head department of english and also the coordinator of the event dr lipika mondol head department of geography 
for designing this program so well. My thanks go to both of them. I would also thank our organizing secretaries, Professor Anandamai Sinha from the Department of Economics and Dr. Mukesh Pradhan from the Department of Physics for your beautiful organization of the webinar. My thanks also go to Dr. Shaheli Choudhury, Head Department of Sociology for hosting today's webinar. Thank you, Madam. I thank Mr. Shubir Shaha, faculty from the Department of Computer Science for his constant support and assistance. I thank the faculty members and the participants who have actively participated during our interactive session. It was because of you all that the program became extremely vibrant and lively. I extend my thank to all the faculty members of Belda College who have joined even amidst their busy schedule and participated. I also thank the participants who joined from different colleges and universities of the state and at national level. Thank you all for your support and making this webinar a very successful one. With this, I end my vote of thanks and declare this webinar closed. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make one announcement. We have posted the feedback link in the chat box and it will be active for 30 minutes. So I would like to request all the participants to, feel, to please fill in the feedback link and it will be closed within 30 minutes. Thank you. Uh, Lipikadi, you are muted. Amadir Ajkir program, Amra Jamadir Honorable Speaker Kepe Chilam. Uh, Jan Madhume, Mr. Habib, Uniamade, Midapur Kote, APP, to Una Madhume Amra, uh, Mr. Sagirke contact Kotapari among a Sundu lecture Amra Sundapilam, to Amra Taka on a Dunuba Janachi, Tiniach Kamade program of Bosit Chilin, to Amra Ekantake, a platform to get Taka Amade, Pokuti, Dunuba Janachi. On a Dunuba, Ami Amade Shoili, Doctor Shoili Choduri, Madam K. Ba. Okay, I'm ending the recording and I'm closing the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.